Hello everyone, I hope you're able to see us live. A very good morning and a very good afternoon since I'm staying here in India. So if it's an evening, it's a morning. So good afternoon, good morning and good evening from wherever you are. And welcome to another edition of Day with Sandra. And I am a little too excited today is because it's a little special today because almost the entire education team is going to be here with you through the entire six hour marathon. So once again, welcome to another edition of Day with Sandra. And I have Liz with me who's going to be helping me throughout and uh, hosting and moderating the second half that is the second session of day with Zander. and beginning with our first session we have Rakesh here who's going to be taking us through the quarterly update of Zenda and all the amazing updates that we've had so far and all the lovely features that you've been using so over to you Rakesh hey thanks Manit uh, uh, good to see everyone yeah so let's just get started one second let me just share my screen uh, let me know in, at any point if you don't see my screen or whatever, because I'll be switch, uh, switching uh, between different screens. Uh, let me see. Cool. You see, do you see yes. the, yeah, one second. Cool. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, everyone. A very good morning to everyone who has joined us live on the David Zenla. And a big hello to those uh, who are joining us, uh, catching us up on the replay later. A um, lot of exciting sessions uh, today. Now, this is the first time uh, Manmeet is running it. Usually David is, uh, David runs the Davis and Liz. So please extend um, all the support. I think uh, Liz is also around to support. So yeah, I think let's uh, dive in. Uh, you guys can see my screen, right? Uh, yes, clearly yeah. visible. Excellent, cool. Uh, I always look forward to the opportunity to do the quarterly updates for you uh, from the product team. And it also gives us an, a chance to look back at the quarter and see what we have accomplished uh, in the quarter. Uh, we ship fixes and updates almost on a weekly basis. And uh, obviously I can't cover all of the changes as I'll be here all day doing that. But I will be, of course, I'll be covering the big, big updates. Uh, if you're interested to see every single update that has gone in, uh, into the change log. Uh, this uh, change log is the pay place to look for. It's in bit.ly slash nz change log on, the, on um, the Facebook group. Let me just kill the thing once again. Uh, cool. <clears throat> now, one of the biggest announcements we did in the last quarter was the public launch of the Zenler app. Uh, it is available for all your students. Download uh, via your uh, App Store and Play Store. Um, if you are on Apple devices, you can download it from the App Store. If you are on iOS, if you are, if you are on Android devices, you can download it from uh, Google Play Store. Now, if you are on paid plans, uh, your students already can access your site from the app. Uh, our team has been working really hard at refining it even further, we continue to uh, refine the app. Uh, ever since we lost soft launch New Zealand Beta, uh, we have seen instructors being constantly asked by students that if they have a mobile app or not. And the only uh, answer that you could really give was, yes, my site works nicely on mobile as pages are responsive, but it's not the same as giving your, your students a, a native mobile experience from uh, a native app. Access to mobile learning is something that students expect nowadays, and you can act, you can now with the New Zealand app, you can do exactly that. A um, lot of instructors wanted their students to be able to access their course and other content on the go, and really needing them, needing the students to sit behind the computer to take the course uh, was quite limiting. Uh, let's just take a look at some of the questions we get ever so frequently in the group. Um, David asks, you know, is there a way to make a Zenla course into an app? Uh, is there an iOS or Android app? Is there a Zenla app? Will Zenla be creating an app for the mobile? Is there plans for uh, an app? We were getting this kind of questions almost every other day and or so on. It, um, is there an app for the roadmap? Uh, now, Anne here asks, is there an app for students who want to check the course on their phone without having to log into the browser? Now, as a consumer, I 
le I'm less likely to log into the group on my phone without an app. So another user, another few set of users asking exactly the same thing. And Suzanne here asks, my students use mostly the phone. Can we have an app so that the courses automatically load into the app? Can the courses automatically go into the app? Do we have an app? Uh, these were the same kind of questions that we were getting asked, asked almost you know, every other day uh, since ever since we launched, uh, soft launch News in a Beta. Now, let's take a quick step back and see how the mobile landscape has changed recently forever and why we decided to prioritize developing the iOS and Android app uh, for you guys. A smartphone device usage is going through an exponential, exponential growth, and it's actually uh, quite higher than the uh, internet uh, use. Uh, half of the global uh, mobile user base uh, or the smartphone user base access, access internet exclusively, exclusively from uh, their mobile devices. And I think it's predicted by 2025 that almost uh, three fourths of all the internet users are going to access web pages via uh, smartphones. Now that's a big thing. And now more than ever, uh, mobile devices have become an essential part of our lives. It has basically allowed us to work from anywhere. It has helped students learn anywhere, anytime. And it has really helped us uh, to connect with our family, friends and colleagues, especially when we were stuck at home with COVID and lockdowns and stuff, which wasn't that long ago actually. Um, students looking for mobile learning and live online classes has never been uh, so high. Um, pandemic has really, really propelled online and, and mobile learning to the, to the next level. And yep, some of the, some of the stats are quite alarming. Uh, we are all hooked. We spend almost a third, one third of our waking day staring at our phones. Um, we spend our, up to four, five hours browsing through apps. Um, these are kind of a bit alarming stats, but that is where your students are. They are on the on the mobile phones, the smartphones all the time. Now let's take a look at uh, video streaming. Around three fourths of YouTube's traffic um, comes from the mobile. Now whether it is streaming uh, Netflix or scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, or learning something on YouTube, mobile has become. Um, the go-to device for people. Everyone's go-to device has moved from laptop, desktop, or even TV to uh, a mobile device in their pockets. That is where your students are. Your student is accessing most of the content from the mobile devices. Now let's take another step back. Let's take a look at um, the global e-learning market size and see what is it predicted to be. Um, the global e-learning market size is predicted to be around 370 billion by 2026. In, in around four years, it's expected to grow to 370 billion. And let's put that in perspective. Let's compare that with uh, the global mobile learning market size, the market share, market size. Uh, the glo global mobile learning market size is estimated to be around 64 billion uh, by in four years. So with all the growth we see in mobile usage, uh, the global ma learning market size is fast taking a huge, huge chunk from the e-learning market size. So the opportunity here is quite clear that it's quite huge. Um, and uh, a mobile app is, is really a must have. Now from crunching all the data that we have access to, uh, we can see all the patterns, we can see all the bottlenecks, we can see all the, all the pain points that students are facing. We can see that on an average, uh, only 10% of students complete the course. This is what, what we see. Now, we all want it to be much, much higher, but the reality is that uh, from looking at the data from our, our platform, general platform, uh, only 10% of students complete, uh, go on to complete a course. Students who don't complete your course are really unlikely to buy more from you in the future. Uh, even worse, uh, they're more likely to request a refund or even submit a poor review. Um, now, everyone's on their phones from a major chunk of the waking day. So to be able to access your content directly on the mobile uh, devices, 
uh, whether be it learning or be it engaging in community or be it commenting uh, on the community or, or even networking. Uh, this uh, using mobile devices uh, for, for delivering your content helps deliver higher completion rates. Now, we are well aware that uh, to build and scale online courses, we really need to be able to build a stronger community uh, and really to be able to trigger network effects. It's great creating a course, but uh, it doesn't stop there. You have to nurture your students, you have to engage with your students, you have to build a community of super fans. Uh, that is what uh, creates network effects, and that is what is needed. And even if you look at Zenler, uh, the Zenler's Facebook community has played a big, big part in our growth story. I'm not looking at chat, but I'll come to the chat later on. Um, now, Zenler has just have a community feature allowing you to create and run communities for your site, courses, or even discussion for a lesson. So, but the community was entirely, entirely web-based. So there's no, there's no way to access uh, there's no native way to access. And of course, community worked on mobile devices, uh, but that was from a browser. And there was no uh, way to access the community from a mobile phone. There was no push notifications to the mobile phone. There was no way to send uh, a message to a, a notification to a mobile phone, to a student's mobile phone. And we saw several, several instructors really, really struggling with their community taking off as engagement factor was missing. Students missed notifications and couldn't really follow what's going on in the community as push notifications was missing. There's no ability to send um, community notifications. There's no ability to push messages to students' phones when you have an announcement, uh, when student replies to another, stu another user and so on. There was no way to notify the other, us other user or other student. Instructors really wanted um, an app that would um, address this big pain point, how to drive community engagement uh, through uh, with the help of an app. So the opportunity here is, is quite huge as uh, the mobile app is quite huge and mobile app is a must to have, is must have for the students. And this actually wasn't even on our immediate roadmap. We plan to do it like much, much later. But seeing all the pains and all, 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 all the stuff I mentioned uh, earlier, we decided it's time to prioritize it. And uh, around one and a half years ago, I think, we formed an, uh, our new brand new app development team. We hired some of the best app, app developers out there and uh, designed and developed the app with uh, students in mind uh, to give your students the best learning experience they can on the go anywhere, anytime on any mobile device, be it iPad, be it iPhone, be it Android device and so on. Now, if you haven't started uh, letting your students know yet, we strongly recommend you do. Uh, the Zendler app is available on the Play Store and App Store. I still uh, see people asking on the group, do you, does Zendler app has an app? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, and you can just go to uh, the Google Play Store or the Apple Play Store, Apple App Store, and then you can search for the term Zenla and your students can download it. Uh, all, all your students have to do is you, you just need to search for the Zenla on the App Store or the Play Store. Uh, with the app, your students can access your site and your courses on the go. So they can access it from any device. Uh, they can access the community uh, they, can act, they can get push notifications from any community activities. A lot of instructors have seen significant, uh, significant growth in the community engagement since um, students started using the app. Earlier, the, communication, the community aspect was a bit lacking because there's no way to send messages directly to someone's mobile device uh, notifications or push notifications. We also added the ability to uh, send announcements via push notifications to all your students. Students, uh, you can send the announcement to students in a particular course um, or to even to a particular student. So your students are not going to miss uh, anything as, they, as the message is going to pop up on their device. Uh, some of you are already using the New Zealand app. 
Vita students and they've had some amazing, amazing feedback on how easy and valuable uh, the app has been uh, to the students. And all of you, uh, the best part of the app is all of your course content that you have inside of your newsletter site flows seamlessly into the uh, general app. All your content from the general sites flows uh, immediately into your general app. And that's the most wonderful part about it. You change something in your course, you add a lesson, uh, you add a video, the lesson or the video uh, automatically flows into your students' mobile device into their app. So they get content straight away. As soon as you add content onto your, on the admin side, to your, uh, to your backend, to the Zender backend, they, it immediately flows to the mobile device and they have access immediately to, uh, on that instant, to your content. All right, so once um, you install your app, the app sits on the student's mobile device. So with one click, they can access the site, uh, access, the, access the app. Um, but uh, yes, it's a Zeller app, but your students can see you through it. And it's just so seamless to set up that it's actually based off uh, their email. And as long as they know their email, that's all they need to access, <clears throat> access the app. Uh, they don't need anything, they don't need passwords. So we kind of made uh, the login process very simple. All they need is if they signed up uh, with xyz at gmail, gmail.com, they just need that uh, particular information. They just need to stick in the email. Uh, if they don't need to log in, they don't need to remember the password that they have used for the for your website and so on. Uh, everything is based off of the email. <clears throat> Once a student uh, adds in their email, uh, the platform will send a one-time uh, code, so it's an OTP that gets sent to the email. And as that's the only thing, we want to make sure that the right person is accessing the app. So once that is validated and verified, um, that's it. Uh, they get access to the, to the content straight away. And even better, if Student, let's say student has signed up to more than one of your sites. In pro, you get three sites, and in premium, you get uh, 10 sites. Now, if your student has signed up to each one of your sites, let's say you're pro, you a pro member, and you have signed up to, uh, your student has signed up to all of your three sites. And once they stick in their email, and they validate the email, they're going to see all the, th all the three sites listed. So you can see, you can see all the three sites listed here, and they can sign up uh, to each of the sites, with the same exact same email and all the sites uh, will be listed here and they can select which site they want to um, log into and they can switch between sites at any point of time. So on the top, they can actually switch between sites here. So if you have, if you have three sites, your students can switch between three sites. So, so you have so one app to access all of your sites. Once they select the site, students can access to, or can get access to um, straight away to all the courses that they have enrolled in, all the courses. Let's take a quick look at uh, some of the Zendler sites and how, how stunning they look. I know this particular one I really like. This is from Carol Robbins. Uh, yeah, so she got live, live classes, class library. Everything is, is nicely. Uh, Rakesh, I'm still able to see the PPT. I'm not able to see the site that you're showing. Oh. Um, do you see the? I think you left. Oh. Okay, let me let me stop the share, screen and share again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do that. I think connection is a bit flaky here for some reason. Let's see. Maybe it's a bit lagging. I think it. No, no. I think I am. Uh, I've been able to consume all the content at the right moment, but I think the net connection could be because of the global. Uh, the other day, also you posted about the five hundred uh, server error that was going on. Really? So I oh. think. Okay, let me share my screen and see. Whether it is any better? Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do share screen. How about now? No, I'm still able to see the uh, Google screen with the uh, application. Oh, uh, do you see the one which says uh, re restorative exercise? Yes, I see this one. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. 
Uh, yeah, that, that that is the app. So yeah, so we we are showing uh, some of the some of the sites being accessed from the mobile devices. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now this one is uh, the Machine Quilting Academy from uh, Tracy Browning. Uh, Tracy is really cool. She has really upped upped her game by uh, getting her students on board nicely onto the app. So she's got you know a strong community going on as well. Uh, another lovely side from uh, Molly, Clark, uh, Molly, Molly Clark. Um, love the branding, so simple, but uh, super effective. <clears throat> a site in another language from Marisa Walker. Again, absolutely, absolutely love the branding colors. It's so, so nice to look. Uh, everything, is, everything seems to be the part. And uh, this site is in another language. I, I don't know what language, I don't know what language is, is, it is, but Hopefully, someone in the chat can. Uh, this one is from <clears throat> Natalie Parker. Again, <clears throat> really nicely laid out and uh, looks really stunning on the mobile. So if, you, if Natalie has other sites, she can switch between different sites here. <clears throat> Another beautiful one from Paula McMillan. A uh, lot of white space used and uh, very minimalist look, but it just works. So another great uh, site view from the app. Um, this is another example of course curriculum view from Patricia, Patricia's side. Uh, again, it looks great. All the curriculum is laid out nicely and it's quite easy to navigate for your students. So they just click and go for between the lessons. Um, so if you, and uh, this is another curriculum view from Carol Rob Robbins' side. Students can see all the progress of this circle here will, is going to change the progress is going to show the progress um, as as they, prog they as they progress through the videos. It's going to show the progress in these circles, and also it's going to say give a tick mark once each lessons are completed, so they can complete each lesson and then they can move on and so forth. Another great example uh, from Neil Alexander's side: um, students can view the lessons, um, they, they can view the videos. So here, the, the, this is an example of a video lesson. Uh, they can listen to audio files. They can view PPTs. Um, here you can see all the progress. So this, this particular student has completed half of this lesson and so on. Um, they can, once they have finished a lesson, they can mark as completed, just like they would do on, on your uh, course player on your on browser. They can also comment on the discussion. Now discussions are like mini communities. So they are like little communities inside a lesson. Inside a lesson. So you, uh, your students can comment uh, on a particular question or and so on. Um, let me see. And yeah, so it's discussions are almost like a mini community. Now Zeller's community feature is an integral integral part of uh, building a stronger community. Uh, engaged community means uh, they are eagerly waiting uh, for your content, they're eagerly waiting to come back into your site. Now, earlier engage, engagement was uh, quite lacking as students did not know what was going on in the community. Only way was to send an email out. And as you know, probably uh, students hate it if you just email uh, notifications left, right, and send it to email. Uh, they already, their email, email inbox is overloaded. So there was no way to send push notifications or notifications on to students' mobile area. Now uh, with the app, every time you post something uh, onto your community, all your students get automatically notified right onto their mobile devices. Now here is a great example of again, how, how Tracy uses apps community uh, that's built into the, the community is built in natively into the app. All the notifications can be accessed anytime. So from the notifications uh, icon, they can click that. I can see all the notifications they are, they are, they have to read, they have read and so on. So all of that uh, are accessible from this notification center. And these are basically real-time notifications. They're not static, but real-time. So when someone sends a message, someone likes a message and so on, you're going to see the notification instantly. It's not when you open the app and so on. It's going to appear. Notifications aren't going to appear, are going to appear automatically. Now, students can also search for courses. <clears throat> they can add in, 
add in a text and search for a particular course. Uh, so we built in the search functionality as well. Um, all of the community notifications are sent via push notifications directly to the relevant students' uh, mobile screens. And the, the notifications, the push notifications uh, for community work the minute they install the app. So they're going to get, if someone installs an app and someone posts something or you post an announcement, they're going in the community, they're going to get uh, the push notification, the, the message pop up on uh, this screen automatically. If you do a uh, post in the community, uh, all your students will see the post. And similarly, if uh, a student comments on another student's post in the community, uh, students who posted who posted the uh, the initial post will also get the message that hey someone replied to your message uh, uh, on the mobile device. Now app is actually for your students, and you need to log in as a student to check out. I think there has been confusion uh, going on who is actually uh, the app is meant for. App is not for admins, but it is actually meant for your students to access their content uh, on the live. It's not to um, do admin activities, not to create, create a course or do any backend activities. It is for your students. Um, having said that, uh, I've seen a lot of instructors uh, using a clever hack to make it work for them. So what they do is they just sign uh, the instructors, uh, they sign up as a student and that's it. Then they can answer the students as on the go and receive alerts and so on. So it's upping the, certainly upping the game for creators too. Now, um, we also added the mobile app branding section to the, uh, to the admin dashboard. So this was not there earlier. So we have recently introduced the mobile app um, menu onto your admin dashboard. With branding, you can control exactly how you want your, your app to look for your students. Uh, you can upload the photo, uh, logo um, with a site that is actually best suited for mobile devices. Um, so yeah, just like you, you have your logo in your admin for your website, uh, we now have an additional section where you can set the logo that you want to appear for, appear on the mobile app for your students once they access your site. And you can also customize the app's uh, theme color so you can uh, select the color you want and all the accent colors, the icon colors, everything gets automatically uh, switched to uh, the branding color you've selected. Yeah, you can have the app to show all the accent colors, uh, all the accent colors, you know, uh, so whatever color you've selected is going to, it's going to um, display those colors, the icons, everything is going to change the color that you've selected. All your colors, all your colors, all your branding. Um, yeah, with one click, you can update all of that. And uh, as an admin, uh, often you want to send an announcement directly to certain members of certain, mem certain um, so to certain particular students, or let's, or you want to send an announcement directly to members of a particular course, students of a particular course. Now that again is very, very important uh, uh, need. And we have added that as well uh, to the app. It's very, very powerful stuff. Uh, now push notifications are a great way to get your students and your community to engage more. Uh, the more students return back to your courses, to your community, the more engagement you get, the more likely they are to, rec to recommend you to others and more likely they continue to pay or pay for the course or you know, uh, take up your upsell. Yeah, so um, you added a push notification section where you can add the announcement, um, say, hey, lesson 10 is live and you can send it to all the, all the students or you can send it to uh, even a specific student. Let's say I want to send, me, send it to Manmeet. I can send that. I can just select Manmeet here and only Manmeet will get the um, push notification. That's, that's, I think that's, that's something else that's really, really cool. And also you can say what action, where you want them, them to be taken. Once they click the message, they can do that. They want to be taken to a particular course and so on, uh, they can do that. So yeah, so that was the Zeller app. Uh, we, spent, uh, uh, we have actually just getting started on it and we only scratched the surface of what we plan to do. 
And as you can see, they're constantly, constantly refining, they're constantly uh, looking at improving it. Uh, one of the things that is coming up is magic links. Uh, that's that's really, really cool. I'm going to cover that as well. Hopefully if time, time permits. Um, yeah, so another thing that we added uh, in the last quarter was global taxes. Now, global taxes are an important part of any uh, e-commerce business. So Shopify, all, all these e-commerce businesses support it. But Zenler did not have entire functionality. Uh, earlier, Zenler only handled European Union VAT. So if you are an instructor based in the EU or if you're selling to a European uh, student, uh, student based in the EU, uh, Zendler was, uh, Zendler, there was an option where you could let Zendler collect the UVAT for you. So Zendler can handle the UVAT mess for you. It's a big pain to collect, report, and pay UVAT uh, to respective tax authorities in the EU. Uh, so Zendler is one of the few, very few course platforms uh, that uh, has the has a UVAT handling functionality. So we collect, report, and pay UVAT on behalf of you. Uh, if you're student, if you when, especially it's relevant to you if you're based in the UN, uh, if your student comes from the EU. But there was no way to handle taxes in other countries. So we used to hand, we were handling EU, but what about other countries? What about US? What about Canada? Um, what about UK and so on? UK has VAT and there was no way to add VAT. And this was a naturally a number uh, the number one request around the taxes side uh, from instructors in countries, especially like um, US, Canada, uh, UK, and so on. Moreover, in in, uh, in US and Canada, um, there's another dimension dimension to it. Uh, apart, in addition to country taxes, uh, some of the states in the US and Canada have got state taxes as well. So that uh, was a big thing. And uh, they had to rely on other platforms like Corderno or other tri other card platforms. They had to stitch together different platforms to do it. So global taxes uh, we added in the last quarter, and with global taxes, there is no more dependency on you know stitching um, other card platforms, or no need to rely on platforms like you know Corderno uh, to do uh, the tax management. So you can add a tax for any country. Um, yeah, so you need, in addition to um, UVAT tax, can, tax handling, you can add country level tax taxes. So you, uh, we already had it. So in the last quarter, we added global tax management. So you can add uh, tax per country. So US uh, X percentage, Canada Y percentage and so on. And UK, if you want to add VAT, you can do that. And yeah, so you can add state tax rates as well. So. So in addition to the country tax rate, you can actually add, let's say New York X percentage. Um, and there's an additional option where you can say for particularly say, let's say for New York, you want to add in addition to the country tax, uh, let's say you want to add the state tax as well. You can, you can do that. So you have option to either include the state tax along with the country tax or you know just, just, charge, just charge state tax and so on. So you have all the options available that you have in you know, standard e-commerce platforms. Now this actually brings powerful um, global tax management to the platform. So no more need to pay for another service or card to do this for you. Uh, if you are an instructor in the US, Canada, and you want to do country and state taxes, you can. Uh, in fact, with this feature, uh, you can do taxes for any location. Uh, let's say you want to add uh, VAT for UK, or let's say GST for India, you can do that. So you can add it for any uh, location. Uh, now, uh, another thing we added in the last quarter was eBooks. Uh, quite often we work on secret projects and this is one of my favorites. Uh, it's very simple, but it's, it's, it's so, so, super cool. We added support uh, for eBook lessons. Uh, with eBook lessons, uh, you can just upload your PDF into the eBook lesson in the curriculum. And uh, the platform will magically transform your EDFs, your PDFs into, into really, really cool looking eBooks. That works almost like you know, uh, a book virtually. <clears throat> uh, New Zealand is actually the first ever platform to build a conversion engine from ground up. 
that will actually convert your PDFs into you know beautiful, beautiful eBooks. And it's actually complete with, just like a real book, uh, we have added all the functionality, including page, page turn animation. When you turn the page, it makes a sound just like a normal, normal book. And uh, you can even zoom in, uh, in in the ebook without losing the quality. So you still get HD quality when you zoom in and zoom out. This seems very simple, but uh, actually there's quite a lot of heavy tech that goes behind scenes. You can set the background image uh, in the course player. You can set the page turn. You can get the page turn animations uh, that works like a real book. And you can also see the slide thumbnails. So the slide thumbnail option as well. You know, so you can actually go between um, different slides. If you've got like 100, 100 slide, uh, 100 page ebook, you can do that. Yeah, so ebooks are also responsive on mobile devices. Yeah, you can also pinch and zoom, all sorts of functionality that a, an a enterprise level like ebook uh, service provider, we have added in. Now, another thing that has gone in, uh, it's actually uh, is a big change uh, as far as user, users are concerned, user management is, con is concerned, uh, is that we added bulk actions. So earlier, there was no way to bulk unenroll students from courses. There was no way to unsubscribe leads in bulk from funnel. There's no way to unregister users in bulk from a live class, uh, unregister users in bulk from a live webinar. There's no way to bulk delete or remove tags. So these kind of bulk actions were missing. So um, it was a big pain. In, you had to go literally go through each and every one, every student and manage it. So some sometimes what happens is instructors accidentally add students to a particular course and let's say you want to unenroll them so what's the way the, the there's no way they have to reach out to support or they have to go to each and every student and individually remove them so with bulk actions you can just select uh, the uh, the user you want from people uh, the student you want and you can click on bulk, bulk actions and a drop down will come and you can bulk unenroll students you can bulk enroll students bulk unenroll students from courses, bulk subscribe leads to a funnel, bulk unsubscribe leads from a funnel, bulk register students to a live class, bulk unregister students from a live class, again register students in bulk from a live webinar, unregister students in bulk from a live webinar, uh, bulk tags, ability to add bulk tags in, uh, tags in bulk, ability to even remove tags in bulk and even delete tags in delete users in bulk. Let's say you accidentally added a lots, of, uh, lots of users and you want to delete them. So that is all possible. So strong um, uh, content management or, or your, your user management system is in place now. Cool. Uh, ever since uh, we launched New Zealand uh, Live feature, we saw a lot of people really, really struggling with this when they had to run the same webinar at different times and dates, there was, there was no easy option. You had to clone the live interactive webinars and then edit the pages and so on. It was actually a big plane. Even Zenla's education team who actually use, we actually use our, our own tools like New Zealand Live to run our weekly webinars. We faced the exact same issue. Uh, when we wanted to run the same webinar, let's say this onboard, onboarding webinar, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So the same webinar, but we're repeating it uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. There's no option. You have, we have to clone and so on. So exact same issue, same issue user, uh, instructors also face. So they wanted to have the exact same webinar, same webinar but give the, the visitors the ability to pick and choose a date and time for the exact same uh, webinar, but on different dates. It was not possible. Uh, so in the last quarter, we addressed that as well. Pain. So we addressed, uh, we added multiple schedules uh, for live webinars, live interactive webinars. Uh, so if you wanted to run the live inter same web interactive webinar on the exact same topic, but on different dates and times, uh, this feature uh, allows you to do just that. Once you add the multiple schedules for live interactive webinars, your students or visitors can view all the dates, uh, they can pick and choose the date uh, when the sessions are available to book and they can register to one of them. 
Now, with uh, multiple schedules for live interactive webinars, you can add more than one time. Uh, you can add more than one time. Uh, it, will, it will appear on the registration page. Registrations can, registrants can book, pick a date and, date and time for uh, the sessions. And we also took the opportunity to add uh, stunning calendar like calendar style pages. Um, we added that uh, along with live interactive webinars. We added the, the, the themes that has um, calendar style registration pages as well. We still have drop down style um, pages as well, but the calendar uh, style registration page is really cool. It really helps. It's really easy for students to you know, book it from any device, be it browser or it's much more, you know, much more modern and much more user friendly. And obviously, or you can set up all the automation uh, reminder sequences. Uh, you can set up, set up the reminders re reminders to go up, go out for each session. Um, so if you want to set up, you can actually go into automations and set a reminder, and and the reminder is going to go for. 22nd of June, 29th of June, July, and so on. You can do all that. Now that was a quick, quick uh, retro. Uh, let me know in chat, what are your favorite uh, updates? Let's, uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, look at the chat so far. Let me have a look. Close the chat. Cool. Yeah, uh, Kevin says, good morning. Hey, Kevin. Uh, Lona says, good morning. Uh, hey, Lona, good to see you. Liz, hey. Kevin says he's been at 10 a.m. with Fantastic Hour talking about sending your courses. Yeah, so uh, in a few minutes, uh, Kevin is going to pop in. Uh, Krishna says, good morning. I'm slightly late because of school run. Uh, no, you can always catch up on replay. Don't worry about that. Uh, can we go live in a community? Uh, Krishna asked and they can watch it on the app. Uh, Krishna, as of now, there's no way to uh, go live in the community, uh, but uh, you share the screen once again. Stop the screen, share. Yeah, there is no way to uh, go live in the community, uh, but there is a workaround. So you can actually go live to your YouTube page and then you can actually embed that onto, onto your community using the uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an option to add an URL, so you can add the YouTube video into that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so Krishna says, is, is it there in the pipeline? Yeah, we do plan to add, uh, we have plans to add uh, going live in the community. So we, are, we there is an option already to go live in the, in, uh, the course curriculum. So similarly, we can do that. Uh, we are planning to add that to the community as well. Um, Krishna says, so impressed with the app so far. Thank you, Zanati. Uh, thanks, uh, Krishna. And Krishna says, ebook and app. Yeah, so ebook and app is, is her favorite. So let, let me know uh, yeah, what is your favorite update in the last quarter. Lona says, I need to try the ebook and app. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. So you, uh, Lona, you can try, you can go to the app store and Google Play Store, and you, yeah, you can get your students search for Zanla. It's very easy. The straightforward um, process to you know access that. Cool. Let me go back to my screen. Uh, one second. Okay. Okay. We share the screen again. Exit that. Okay. Let me share the screen. Nice, nice. You see the screen, screen again, guys? Uh, Manmeet and Liz, can you see the screen? My yes, I can. Cool. Yes. Okay, let's, uh, so hey, but hey, what's an update without some cool announcements, right? Are you guys up for some announcements? Uh, yeah, if you're ready for some annou announcements, let me know in chat. So let's, let's get started. So we don't, we can't let go of an update without some announcement. That's not fair. So let's let's do it. Okay. So earlier we added multiple schedule support only for live interactive webinars. This wasn't really available for traditional live webinars. 
a lot of instructors wanted to be able to do that for live webinars too. Now, excited to announce that we uh, just added support for multiple schedules for live webinars as well. So if you want to run the exact same webinar on the exact same topic, but on different dates and times, you can do that. You can exactly do that uh, for webinar, just like we could do for live interactive webinars earlier. We just added the ability from to add multiple schedules for live webinars. So this just gone in. Um, once you add multiple schedules, your visitors can see that you're running the exact same webinar at different times. And all they have to do, they can just pick up, pick and choose the time and uh, date for the webinar. And they can register. Uh, with the multiple uh, schedules feature for live webinar um, that has just been added, we, uh, on the live webinar, you can display more than one times for them to book your, your live webinar. Uh, let's say on this particular example, it shows 6th July, 20th, 20th July, and 28th July, 28th July. And they can pick the date and then they can choose the time and they can register for the session. So these, these are exactly the same sessions, but they it, it runs on different timings. Uh, again, we got we have got calendar style pages, uh, and also there's an option for drop down style pages, also if you want to do that. And uh, just like in interactive webinars, uh, there is a way to set up reminder sequences. Uh, you can set up in automation, you can add reminder sequences and so on. So it's, it's pretty, pretty powerful. And another thing uh, that has just gone in is earlier, we had recurring support only in live classes and interactive webinars. Only live classes and interactive webinars supported recurring sessions. Uh, recurring sessions option was just not available for traditional live webinars option. Uh, today we are announcing that too. Uh, we just added, uh, super excited that we just added the uh, recurring sessions option to live webinars as well. So now we got recurring sessions for the entire spectrum of live. So live webinars, live classes, live inter interactive webinars, all of them have has got uh, the recurring uh, sessions option now. So with uh, recurring sessions in live webinars, uh, you can set up a live webinar as recurring. You can set it as a recurring one. Uh, this option wasn't available for webinars earlier. Um, once someone books a spot on the recurring webinar, they get access to all the recurring sessions using the same link without additional, additional uh, registrations or booking. So once you have a recurring webinar, let's say today, tomorrow, and day after, they just need to register once, they're going to get all the reminders for the same link, they can get into all the different sessions. So all the recurring options are available monthly, day, daily, weekly, and so on, just like what you got for interactive webinars and uh, live classes. And you can also, let's say you, if you're going on a holiday and if you're set up, set up a recurring and you can't do one day, if you, if you want to take off that day, you can edit those uh, that those schedules as well in uh, view occurrences and edit occurrences. Now, another thing that has just gone in is reordering in blocks. Uh, I know Kevin is going to be happy with that. Uh, there is, earlier, there was no way to re around, reorder the blocks. Uh, we had reordering in courses, but we didn't have it in on blocks. This was again a popular request around the blocks feature and we just added that as well. So reordering in blocks is now in. So you can just literally drag and drop, uh, reorder your uh, blog post and you want to change, you can actually control the way the posts appear in your blog post. Uh, just like the reorder functionality uh, we have in courses. We are constantly looking at how uh, you can make your life a little bit more easier so we, we actually see a lot of, when we see a lot of people struggling around something, we prioritize it and we implement them. So this is just one example of that. Uh, when we see uh, you guys are having a pain or being, when you hit the same issue again and again, and we see patterns emerging that a lot of people have this issue, we prioritize it. And this is ex exact, exact example of that. A reordering is block, in blocks is now available. Now let's look at what is coming up. There's a lot of exciting stuff that is coming up. Um, earlier, we added multiple schedule support only for live interactive webinars. And today, uh, a minute ago, I announced that, you know, we, this is now available. Multiple schedules is available for live webinars too. But what about live classes? Now, the team is working on that too. So 
multiple schedules is coming up for live classes. Uh, the support for multiple schedules is coming up for live classes as well. Uh, I've seen people using multiple schedules for several things. Uh, some, some of the instructors even use it for one-to-one. -one. So if you set the number of attendees as one, you can easily run it as one-to-one uh, -one as well. So the, uh, what we have right now uh, works with that as well. Cool. Now this is this one that is coming up. I'm super, super excited about this kind of literally changes everything again. Uh, earlier, when whenever you created a live class or a webinar, it wasn't easy for you or students or site visitors to get a bird's eye view of uh, now when exactly your sessions are scheduled. This was a constant struggle we have seen playing out day in, day out since we launched News and Alive. And uh, this has been a top request around the News and Alive um, space. And News and Alive are constantly driven by you know, your needs and your pains. We are bringing uh, the calendar functionality to you, to the instructors, and also to the students. Now let's take an example. Let's say you are an, a yoga instructor and you want to run a series of live yoga paid classes uh, at certain dates and times of the week. Um, and once you set up, uh, these will all be displayed on a, they'll be going to add a public calendar page. So you're going to have a slash calendar page and your students can literally pick and choose the time um, uh, from the calendar and they can actually book the, uh, book the session. And wouldn't it be amazing? No? So you can see, all, you can publish all your, your schedule on the calendar if you want to, on your public calendar, and your students can, you know, book sessions, um, book sessions you know, right from the calendar. And this along with, you know, one-to-one -one sessions that we are planning to add, uh, you can literally stop you know, uh, subscriptions like Calendly. So we are bringing the, all of the functionality into the platform, natively into the platform. Uh, with the calendar functionality, you as an instructor will be able to see all the live classes, all webinars um, that you're scheduled on the calendar. You as an instructor can create live classes, webinars from the calendar. So calendar is going to be like your home for your live. So you can click on the calendar and you can select a date and time. You can create uh, your live session from that. So everything uh, will, you can, you can start from a calendar and create uh, your live class and see where you got you know, free slots and you can schedule a live class or live webinar for that spot. And your students will also see all the upcoming live webinars and uh, classes and they can book from the calendar. Uh, if you're not kept, uh, kept the live class or a webinar as a secret. Uh, so we will also have a slash calendar slash dedicated calendar page on your site. Uh, which is going to automatically appear once we add it. So it's going to display all your upcoming live classes, webinars. Uh, so anyone can see, will be able to see all your sessions that are available to book and, or if they, are, they have slots available and all the visitors, they can book from your calendar page. And even better, uh, we made it such a way that the calendar will show in students' time zone. So if you are logging in from uh, UK, it's going to, uh, if you're an instructor in the US and if you set in the US time zone, it's going to convert to the UK time zone. So it's going to convert, uh, it's going to show, the calendar is going to show up in the times and the times are going to be shown in students' local time zone. So again, this will reduce a lot of confusions we have with time zones, you know. Um, I don't want people to convert and so on. So now on from the calendar, they can exactly see when it's happening in their local time zone. Again, something we are, we are super, super excited about. Uh, ever since we launched New Zealand, we have seen n number of requests um, you know, for instructors to be able to run one-to-one -one bookings within the platform itself and literally remove dependencies on other tools like Calendly and Book My Schedule and so on. We have seen uh, requests for one-to-one -one functionality has kind of increased uh, several folds ever since uh, Zoom started limiting three sessions to 40 minutes. Earlier, Zoom has Zoom did not time out after 40 minutes. The, the free sessions were kind of liberal. They were like, you could run like for two hours and so on. They relaxed during the COVID time. Now it's all, all, all done. They have gone back to the old thing. So they have, so once 40 minute time, time out, uh, uh, when you end, the session will end after 40 minutes, basically the free session. So currently most uh, instructors on New Zealand, they use New Zealand Live for live classes and live webinars. 
and interactive webinars, but for one-to-ones, they use Zoom's free session uh, if they don't have a Zoom uh, paid plan. But with Zoom's lim new limits of 40 minutes uh, per session, clearly this is an even bigger pain point. Uh, with the upcoming one-to-one -one, uh, bookings feature, uh, you can set up one-to-one -one session and publish the session on the calendar and someone can purchase and book a one-to-one -one spot with you. Um, you can also add, you also will be adding an extra option to be able to send directly. I know this gets asked every now and then, can someone get a direct link to the meeting room? Yeah, so with the one-to-one, -one, you can get the direct link as well. So you can actually bypass, you know, the, the registration and directly send a, without needing them to, without them needing to, you know, add, add in their email and register and so on. So this will kind of make Zendler as a full-fledged, uh, this will this will you know, complete the circle. So it will make Zendler as a full-fledged live coaching platform. And I really, really, we can't really wait to see all of this uh, being shipped out. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, Zendler's page editor is another thing that uh, we plan to you know, uh, revamp entirely. So the Zendless page it has been one of the platform's greatest strengths. Uh, it allows you to drag and drop and create any sort of design that you want. Most of the platforms have an hard-coded um, hard template-based editor, and you can only click and edit and change uh, certain areas. It's almost like hard-coded editors. Uh, with Zendler, we push the boundaries there, and with we created a drag and drop page builder. Uh, with hundreds of design done for you, design blocks. But, but what we saw is many instructors face several issues creating pages, the page designs they want. They had to resort to posting, you know, the Facebook group or a page designer to help them out or to buy one of the block templates from one of the template creators. We wanted to change all of that. We really think as a platform, we should be able to provide, you know, stunning, stunning uh, themes out of the block out of the uh, out of the box and we want you to be able to do it do all of it without needing any additional help without needing anyone uh, you know to buy extra templates and so on so a little, little while ago we decided to freeze all the page editor changes and we started working on revamping the page editor from the ground up to bring a theme based page editor it's a bit like what you have in wordpress uh, shopify or elementor themes uh, basically to shape the new page editor from what we have learned from all the feedback from all the page creators that created like thousands of pages on the platform and all the pages that has been created. Uh, we just looked at all the pages that has been created on the platform and everything. The new page editor that will come out will include uh, beautiful, beautiful themes that you can browse. So, and then you can choose from a side theme and then you can install the theme. You can actually work in the sandbox behind the scenes. And when you, when you are absolutely ready to go live, you can, with one flick of a button, you can swap your entire old site with your new site, with a new theme. And now let's say you have gone live with a, with a new site and you have hit, hit an issue and you can actually roll back. You can actually switch back to your old, old theme as well with a flick of a button. So you can keep working uh, on the background when you're absolutely ready, when you test it out, when you make sure everything is ready, then you can push it to live. Or if you have any problems, no problems, you can always go back to your you know, previous uh, theme. It's a lot of lot of work and we want to make sure we get it right. Uh, it will take some time, uh, but we will get there. Um, so what we're doing, we are trying to build as an easy to use page designer that tracks anyone with, without any design, with uh, no coding skills, a zero code to create pro looking sites without needing anyone to help you or without needing to buy extra templates and so on. Uh, of course, if you are a theme creator, we are looking at that side as well. Uh, we will also be having the ability to upload themes. At the moment, I think theme creators are create blocks and they are to install it manually uh, for the clients and so on. So we're going to have the ability where theme creators can upload a zip and you know, and then with one click, uh, uh, client, your clients can install and so on. So we, at some point, we will build a marketplace and ecosystem for Zenla themes, just like uh, Shopify has got for Shopify themes. Um, we, are build, we are building it in such a way that we can do all of that. So we are taking care of both sides. 
Now, another thing that we are working on right now uh, is again, we are something we are really excited about is crisis and surveys. It's, if you ask me what is something, what is the part of the gender that you're not really happy with, I would say it's crisis and surveys. Uh, we're not happy with what we have uh, on the platform. Although it's quite featured, there's all sorts of features, it's got grading, it's probably more featured than any course platform out there. There are quite a few issues around it and it's not where exactly uh, where we want it to be. We see a lot of you struggling with crisis and surveys. So we realized instead of fixing stuff on the current version, we decided we will freeze again, we freeze. This is what we typically do. We, if we think that something we cannot add on to it, we'll just kill it. We, we just decide to be, we freeze all the development on the current version and we start all over again. We take all the learnings from the previous version and then we, we develop it again, redevelop it again from scratch. So we are doing that right now we, uh, so that we can deliver a super powerful uh, quizzes and service feature that you can rely on. Zenda is an LMS, it's a learning management system at the core. And a learning manage management system need to have a powerful, robust quiz functionality, it's a must. Now that is exactly what we're doing. We're building an enterprise level quizzes and surveys. It's complete with all the quiz types. All right, we're going to do it in phases, but we're just going to add, we're going to add all the sort of quiz types that you would expect. And we're going to put in, a, put in place a framework for us to be able to add more quiz types later. And we're going to add the framework so that we can add, uh, regularly add themes. We're going to have stunning themes for your quizzes. Uh, so it's going to be, it's going to have feedbacks for your questions. And even you could also do complex branching. So you can even, uh, we're going to add a survey element onto the page, the new page as well. So you can actually, you, uh, you can use it for survey funnels as well. So it's pretty, pretty powerful stuff that we're building. Um, it's a lot of work, but uh, we'll get that soon. And let's take a look at the next one. Again, Zenler community feature uh, is the, one of the most widely used popular feature on the platform. And what I love about what we have right now is it's quite simple, but it's instant, it's real time. It's not static like the other, uh, like some of the other platforms out there. So there in our, on the other platforms, you have to refresh this, you have to, you have to re -log in or refresh the screen to see notifications and so on. With Zenless community feature, uh, the, what we have right now, you can actually get live notifications on the admin side, on the student side. Uh, you can you, you also get notifications on email, desktop, and now on the app as well. But a lot of instructors wanted Zenla to have a stronger, a more mature community feature, uh, a bit like what we have for, Facebook, for the Facebook group. Now, this has been a huge popular request, and this is something we decided to prioritize uh, to work just after the, uh, the editor and the quiz revamp. So currently, we are working on the editor, page editor revamp and the quiz and survey revamp. So once we are done, we are going to move on to the quiz, uh, the community revamp. So instructors wanted the ability to add topic, direct directory, featured post, ability to feature some posts, pin for post uh, to top and so on. So, so some of the instructors still used um, Facebook group and other tools like Mighty Network because the uh, Zenla uh, community, although it was real time, it was not providing the tool needed for them to you know, run a successful community. So we will be looking at revamping that as well. Okay, one of the things that is coming up uh, in the app, so we are constantly refining the app is magic links, where you will be able to send a direct link to your to students and prospects to your particular, uh, to your app, to the Zenler app, um, or to a particular course on, on your app, on the app. So with one click, uh, from the link, they will be redirected to the App Store and, and they can in instantly download the app and install it. And uh, immediately on installation, it's going to take them, it's going to skip all the Zenless uh, splash screens and it's going to automatically take them to your site's home page on the app. So it's much more, you know, branded experience. Uh, it's, it's a Zenler app, but it's going to skip all the Zenless splash screens and it's going to automatically transport them to, your, to the Zenler app, but with your home screen. Uh, we're also going to add support for free course enrollments in the app. So once we do that, you will be able to add, you, you will be able to use the app. You will, do, you will be able to use the app itself for lead generation. 
um, you can say, hey, download map uh, to enroll into my free course. Now, to go, together with uh, magic links uh, and free course enrollments, this makes a very powerful combo. Uh, this makes, uh, this, you can leverage the app uh, for, you know, for lead generation even further. Um, so Zeller app, as I said, we're going to constantly refine it. So currently it, it does not support live classes. Uh, we're going to add support for live classes as well. And uh, Zeller mail is one of the most powerful features of, of the platform. And uh, instructors get uh, high email deliverability uh, on the platform, but we still plan to, we plan to uh, do more and more enhancements around Zeller mail. That's, uh, that's something we plan to do. Um, we continuously refine, we continuously refine the Zeller mail for you. And uh, because we are going to revamp quizzes and surveys, we will be able to do uh, very, you will be able to do very complex survey funnels. We're going to add new funnel types, including survey, survey funnels. So, you know, you, you, you'll be able to branch out, or you, you'll be able to, you know, create complex survey funnels for your lead generation and so on. So that's something we, uh, we are going to work on. And lot and lots of uh, refinements to the platform uh, and in infrastructure. And always some secret stuff we always plan, but obviously I can't announce all of that. And uh, because the new page editor is going to be uh, theme-based, it's not going to be based on blocks or anything. It's going to be theme-based. Uh, we are going to add themes you know, very regularly. So then, you know, if you want to switch, if you want to refresh your, your site, you can just switch between uh, switch to the new theme very easily. Uh, yes, we're going to do that as well. We're going to ship new themes regularly. I think that was, uh, I think I probably overrun a bit, but yeah, I think that was an update from the product uh, team side and on the roadmap side. And let me see whether uh, any, any more questions on the chat. That was such a power packed morning, Rakesh. I was loving the features that are coming up, especially the calendar one and the one to one bookings. I think I'm eagerly waiting for it. Yeah. I think you guys have seen the sneak preview for the calendar, right? Yes. That's why I'm all the more excited. Yes, exactly. Yes. It's, it's very, very powerful. Cool. Let's see any, let's see any other questions from anyone. Um, yeah. Liz says, uh, looking forward to the calendar feature. Hazel says, I so wish I could give up a whole day for this. Seriously, I'm sure I'm missing out loads of stuff. Um, yeah. Liz, uh, yeah. Uh, as Liz said, you can catch the replay on any time. So do not worry. Uh, Krishna says, yay, one-to-one -one booking. So many features uh, are coming up. Yeah, so at, uh, yeah, that's what we we try to do. We try to you know, look at all your pains and try. We don't look for just to add features. We look at the pains and we add you know, features around that. Uh, Krishna says, awesome. I missed the drag and drop that I had in my basic week site. Lona says, wow. Um, yeah, I think David has recapped all the new features. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it from uh, my side. Uh, back to you, uh, Mangit. Thank you so much, Rakesh. Like I said, it was a power pack morning and I'm sure everybody who's listening to us live knows that what is Zenla going to turn into and they're eagerly waiting for all the new features coming in. And everybody who was not able to catch us uh, live, please watch the replay and you will, be, you will be overwhelmed with all the features that are coming in to make your sites more and more productive. Thank you so much, Rakesh. Welcome. Yeah. We already have Kevin here. Hi, Kevin. Hi, morning, everybody. You all right? Good morning. We are good. How about you? Yeah, really good. Thank you very much. We are eagerly waiting to learn how to sell our courses. <laughs> right. Well, um, firstly, thanks to Rakesh. Uh, some awesome updates going on there. Glad to see the blog hasn't been forgotten and that we're moving forward with that, which is, uh, you know, it's one of my passions in life. Uh, making sure that area works for everybody. So looking forward to all of those updates. But we're going to get in uh, to this this morning in my session. You're all going to be pleasantly surprised, but I've decided to do my session today on selling courses. Um, so there's no slideshow involved because, you know, um, I want people to interact. I want people to come back into the chat and tell me where they are and what's going on. Uh, and you ladies as well, you're more than welcome to join in uh, with what we're doing. 
So, but I'm going to, if it's okay, I'll get straight into it um, and we'll get going. Is that okay? Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So one of the things, and I've, I've dealt with course creators for many, many years now. Uh, one of the things that's really obvious and probably the biggest sticking point for most course creators is they get very excited. They will come across a platform like New Zenla. They'll go, this is really awesome. I want to teach. I want to share my knowledge. I want to help people out there that need the, the support that I can offer them. So they'll go off and they'll spend a long time researching and creating a course. It's a really beautiful course. It's got lots of things going on in there. And then it comes to the day where they launch the course and then nothing happens. And I've seen this so many times. Um, it's demoralizing. Um, it's frustrating. Um, and you start to question your own abilities as an instructor. Now, this is um, a situation that most people will fall into, especially in the early days of course creation. Now, this isn't your fault because what happens is people will sell you the dream of go create a course, you'll make millions. We've all heard this before. This is not a new idea. Uh, the reality is creating the course is only part of a larger process that you need to go and do. And I'm going to talk today a little bit about what that process is, what your process may look like for you, and how New Zenda and the tools within New Zenda can support you in creating that process. So let me know if you think that sounds useful to you. Um, if it does, then stick some hearts on the screen uh, because I want you to interact. So today is not about me sitting here talking to you for an hour and going blah, 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 blah. Today is really about you walking away after this hour, maybe just under, with a really strong idea of how you're going to move forward in not only creating your courses, but having a really strong plan behind it on how you're going to make sales, how it's going to be effortless, how you're not going to get into that icky feeling of, oh, I've got to go and sell stuff, um, or desperation, because we all know when you hit the desperation point in making a, trying to make a sale, everybody just runs for the hills. Nobody's interested. So it's really important that we have that plan in place. It takes all of the pressure off of you. And for those of you that know me quite well within the Zenda community, you know I like stuff being natural, being quite easy, being unpressured and just flowing really nicely so we can enjoy the process of what we do. When we enjoy the process, it comes out subconsciously in what we put out into our students, our communities, our people, in everything that we do. If we're coming from a place of desperation, we get wound up, we get wound tight. And even when we're creating a sales page, it's it, you won't see it, but your audience will feel that desperation within what you're doing and saying and how you're presenting yourself so if we take all of that away and that's my goal for today is take all of that away have a really nice process of actually what am i going to do how am i going to do it what's my uh what's my flow to get into the point so when i launch or pre-launch my course i'm going to have people that are going to sit here either be on a waiting list or they're going to pre-buy or they're going to buy when i open up the cart so does that sound reasonably interesting to everybody? Because if it doesn't, then it's going to be the shortest hour in a day with Zenless history because I'm going to go and hand back to my mate because that's all I've prepared. If it sounds good, then stick with me because we're going to start right at the very beginning. Now, let me know in the chat if you do are interested in this, if this is something that you want to get involved in. Um, and then if you are watching this on the replay, bookmark this part within the day with Zenla because it's something you'll probably want to come back to and refine as you go through. So our end point is always going to be our course. It's the thing that we know. It's the thing we're comfortable with. I'm not going to go through how you make a course or any of that stuff. That's our end goal. Our end goal for this particular session is I want to sell my course. We need to start way back at the beginning of thinking long term on what we're going to do. Now, this does involve marketing. I come from a marketing background. It does involve building your um, exposure online. And I'm only talking on really online at the moment. Let's keep it quite straightforward. And let's talk about the online side of what we're doing. So we go off, we build our course. 
what do we need to be able to make sales in our course? This is the interactive part, by the way. This is the bit where you go, this is what I think we need. So I'm going to give you a few seconds just to think about that because I know there's a delay on here. What do we need to be able to sell our course easily, effortlessly, with no stress? What's what the main thing? So Lizzie's saying we need an audience. What's Mamit saying? Uh, I think, uh, like Liz said, we need to uh, like reach out to our audience and they should feel relatable to us. Like whatever we are writing in the copy or making the page, they should feel that it's for me. So there should be a relatability if, I mean, effect there. That's what okay. I feel. So what we're talking about is an engaged, up-to-date, current, active community, audience, whatever label you want to put onto this. Um, because if nobody knows we exist, when we go, hey, look at my stuff, nobody will care because nobody will see it right really simple so we need an engaged audience we need people that go you know what i want this i need this i want to get involved in this and they're sort of sitting there ready and waiting because you've warmed them up right so a warm engaged audience you can't go out and do one facebook post the day before you launch your course and achieve that it's absolutely impossible so how do we start to create a warm and engaged audience? Second question for you. Show up consistently, Krishna says, uh, for the right audience with the right information. Good point. So how do we start? Where do we start when we're doing this? Where, where do we start with audience building? Any ideas, anybody? through our uh, communities like uh, people around us our social medias i mean so i'm on day one right i've just maybe set up my facebook page i've just decided to become a course creator Let, let's say i left the world of insurance because i was bored with insurance it, it drove me mad i've suddenly decided to become a cat trainer because my love of cats and experience has been with my life for 20 years and I can really help people train cats, right? Anybody that knows my psychotic cat one, you know, you get where I'm coming from with this. So I have no Facebook page. I have no authority online. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows what I do. Where do we start? In that case, my recommendation would be, my personal opinion would be starting with the personal connects, like people that we know personally. And we would know that this person would be interested in this kind of course. Um, this kind of coaching. So starting with the personal connects that we have. Just okay. in my personal opinion. Yeah, that, that's an interesting one. Um, often when people go down that route, and I see this a lot of the time, what they will do is they'll go off onto Facebook, they'll go to their friends list and they'll invite their mum and they'll invite their sister and they'll invite their brother. They might invite their children or their aunt or their uncle or their best friend. None of them are ever going to buy a course about cats. Yeah. They're just there because they're being supportive. They're being nice. That's great. Absolutely. Gives you a few numbers, but it doesn't create an engaged audience of the right people. Okay? Definitely. So Definitely. Yeah. any other ideas on how we're going to create an engaged audience? Where do we start right at the very beginning of creating an engaged audience? So let me just quickly go into the chat. So David's saying, start helping people produce videos, help, help, help. Where do they hang out? Are they in my network? Who can introduce me to cat people? Tell them what you do in a related Facebook group or similar. Some good things coming up here. See, I knew you was all awake. Everyone said, now nah, 10 o'clock, they'll all be asleep. No, nah, you're, you're, you're here. You're doing this. Uh, David, formal authority. Liz is saying, show up where your potential clients are already. Uh, definitely borrow someone else's audience, Sarah says. Um, and all of those things are right. But we need to start right at the very beginning. The very, very beginning is we've created this course. The first thing is, who do we actually want to engage with this course? Do we actually really know and understand who they are? That's the first thing. The second thing is we need to find out, as somebody said in the chat there, we need to understand where are they hanging out? Now, if I create a Facebook page today, which is really easy to do, it takes 10 minutes. What's not so easy to do is build that Facebook page especially if we've got nothing going on in there. We've just created a page. Look, I'm going to help with, you out with these cats. Come along. Your reach is zero. Nobody knows it exists. You invite your mum and your aunt. 
it's really not going to do anything for you. So we've got a number of choices that we can make here. Now, this is where you start to differentiate which route you want to go down, because you will find there are lots of different routes you can go down. You may decide to do a combination. You may decide to just do one, or you may decide, actually, I want to do that one and that one. To start to get noticed online, there's only two routes to traffic, right? There is only two that exist. One is the search engines, as in you create something, it gets found by people searching. That's a really good source because people going to search engines have a direct need. They go in there and go, I need help with, I want to buy, I want to learn, et cetera, et cetera. So they go to a search engine, they're putting in a direct question that they want a direct answer for. So that's why that's avenue number one, right? Really, really straightforward is let's look at and explore how do we get listed in a search engine for what we do, i.e. training cats. Option number two, and the other one which most people fall back on is social media. So we've got search engines, big, big, big. Everyone goes, looks in there, wants a direct answer. Social media, people go on there for loads of different reasons, connecting with family, wasting time, little bit of research, etc. Communities, they want to engage with people, meet human beings, etc. There's loads of reasons to go on there. And there's also loads of different platforms that exist for different reasons. So social media becomes this bit of a big beast, as in, well, how do I know where my people are and on what social media platform they're going to be. Now, social media is really great because they do all the hard work for us. Our job on social media is really easy. So once we understand who we want, so let's park up the SEO, the, the search engines for a minute and let's look on social media. They make it really easy because pretty much every social media channel has a search bar. So we can go on there and there's somebody mentioned, Sarah mentioned, somebody else mentioned, you know, go off and use somebody else's audience that they've built. Why not? If there's a group of people looking to do something with psychotic cats on Facebook, you know, there is people that are on that channel that are going to be looking for that type of support. It's a good starting point. Doesn't mean you're going to sell courses, just means you've got a good starting point. So it may well be worth you either joining that group, which we can do, leveraging someone else's audience, creating our own page, stroke group, associated group, to start actually, you know what, I know there's people on here that are doing this. So therefore, if they're doing it, it's an area that I can get involved in and build up slowly. Or if we can't find anything worthwhile, it could just well be the fact that people don't like talking about cats or cat training on that particular platform so a good example of that may well be going on to something like pinterest looking for cat training on pinterest probably not going to be a massive area of interest for people on there because they go onto pinterest for very different reasons and that probably isn't going to be one of them so we start to filter out who we are who we're looking for and where we're going to find them search engines absolute given if you've got something that even one person in the world wants even if it's the most obscure the likelihood is they're going to be on there now we could go more in depth with the search engines and go into okay what are people actually looking for do some key phrase research etc etc and delve into it that way but the likelihood is on a very basic level if you've got something that you know in your heart people are going to want to get involved in they need help with let's talk about cat training there's a lot of naughty cats out there i know that there'll be a few people that want this course search engines are pretty much given when we go to social media we want to look and find that one really hot platform that we can go in and go where there's active communities there's active people on here talking about this topic interacting my audience are most definitely on this one we're going to focus and we're going to dominate this platform for that particular topic because it's associated with my audience and ultimately the course that I want. So that's where we start. So we'll go off and we'll start to create the assets. Let's talk social media specifically for that topic and those particular people. Now, just creating a page, like I said, isn't going to get you streaming along 
with people. So we need to, let me just, um, let me just go back through uh, the chat. So telling you what you're doing like your Facebook group. Yeah, Krishna, the only thing with that is you need to have conversations with um, the group owner just in case that breaches any of their rules. They might get the strop about that and therefore decide to throw you out because you're promoing too much in their group. Uh, show up where your potential clients are already. Yeah, good. We covered that. Sarah, definitely borrow someone else's audience. Um, so Sarah's also saying a page filled with cat memes will have 10,000 followers in a week very probably we're going to get on to that in a second so first thing is we know where our audience is we've worked at our platform search 100 percent. let's focus on one particular channel as in it might be facebook i know david is hot on youtube he does loads of videos over there that really works well for his business i know uh one of the mindset mechanic that's in here he does really really well on youtube as well he knows his audience is there. They've researched it. They've looked at other people, what they're doing, what they're building, and they're focusing 100% of their social efforts on there, on one channel. They're not diluting it down by trying to conquer them all. Also, there's associated search traffic that's going on as well. So how do we start? What's the next stage once we've established where our people are as to start to get some form of interaction going on? So this is a question to all of you wonderful people watching this. Um, where do we head for next? So we've gone off, we've gone, right, we've created this course. We've gone out, we've done a bit of research. We've decided search is always a good thing. We're going to come into that in a minute. We've gone into social media. We've looked at some things. We've decided there's a need. Let's let's just say Facebook for now because most people get Facebook. Uh, whether you like it or not, there is a, an audience over there. So we've gone onto Facebook. Yeah, we're going to do something over there but we're not quite sure what yet. Um, what's the next step? That's my question to you. What do we do now? So you can put that into the chat. I can't see anything going in the chat yet. So get your typing fingers out. Let's get going and see what you think. Mummy, if you want to jump on and give me your answer, you're more than welcome to. If not, I'm just going to tell you what the next stage is. I think the next thing would be uh, to maybe, you know, test our curriculum, like whatever uh, thing we have that we want to set out as an offer, uh, probably uh, test it once before, you know, going full fledged and giving out to the people because a lot of times that has happened with me once we have created an offer we should also see if that is what the market wants and if uh, that is the kind of delivery people are looking at. So is that the next thing? I don't know. Right. You've, you've jumped the gun a little bit. It's definitely okay. <laughs> in the process, but that's move, moving on from a couple of stages. So we've gone off, okay. we set our Facebook page up, right? We've decided search is good for us. What's the next step? Okay, creating content. Liz? Yes, I was trying to type in the tap and it wouldn't go through the comments. So I don't know if other people are having that problem. Um, for me, I would start supporting people within that area. So I'd lead with service, with giving, just supporting them with any little questions that they're coming up with, any pain points that you can give like a, an easy top tip or a quick sort of win for them. Um, that's where I'd begin. Okay. Right. Both of you are right, but you still missed a step. Right. The next step for us to do, if we're going to start to look to get found in search and on, we're saying Facebook for the purposes of this example, is we need to get our channels ready and optimized before we do any content. So with in Facebook, we can put up a nice header, we can optimize our channel for search using our key phrases, we can make sure everything's aligned as it should be before we put any content on there. The same with the blogging area in New Zenla, because that's where we'll create findable content um, in the search engines. So we want to make sure that the whole area within the blogging area within New Zemla is optimized properly. We've got a lovely header up there, et cetera, et cetera. And it's all SEO optimized. That's stage one, because if we get that bit wrong and people come along and they look at your account and it's got that horrible gray header, nobody really knows what the page is about. They'll jump on and they'll jump off. The same with your blog. If they don't instantly recognize this is all about cats, they'll come along and then they'll leave again. 
because they'll go, oh, I think I'm in the wrong place. It also won't help you when people are actually searching because both of those things get indexed. So even on a Facebook page, if you go into the search engines, a Facebook page will get indexed in the search engines if you optimize it correctly. Definitely the same with your own blogging area. If you get that indexed correctly, it will be found in the search engines. So the first thing, optimize whatever area it is that you decide that you're going to go and work on. The next stage, as you quite rightly say, is we need to have a content plan, right? Because without it, we're sort of just running around and nothing's happening too much, right? Now, the content plan can contain multiple different things, um, and it should work on, um, on a sort of formula, if you like. So any ideas what you think that formula might be? So if we're going to go out and create a content plan, right? Where do we start with a content plan? What do we do? Do we just wake up one morning and go, like Sarah says, here's a nice cat meme. Off we go. I'm going to post it. And then I'm going to ignore it for three months. Is that a good content plan? No, I think a content plan uh, would be a value-driven content plan. Like, uh, like Liz mentioned, that helping them out or showing them the pathway or making them aware of, you know, this is a problem and this could be the solution. A value-driven content plan, which clearly shows them that this is the problem I solve. This is the solution I have, and this is the pathway that I'll take you through. And the uh, you know challenge that I did, also a content plan that involves storytelling so that they can believe you that it's doable. You have done it, and you are a person of uh, you know uh, experience who's been through the phase, and you are not just says, you are not just there saying that I can teach you, but you've also done it yourself, and then you are there saying that you know I'll take you through the path. So this is what I feel about the content okay. plan. Liz, what do you think? Yeah, I love it. I think it's showing your authority. So like my meat said, it's through your experience. It's through whatever, you know, wisdom you've collected along the way. And just sharing that so that they know that you're a person they can trust. And it's beginning to build up that connection, that communication, and that relationship with people that may be clients, but also may just be supporters of you. You never know how, you know, connections and, and networking can work. Okay. So anything else within the content plan or do you think that's enough? Um, I think, yeah, yeah go ahead. let's go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, so for me, I guess I'd also be looking to cover some things that are going to support them to get them to that kind of first point. So looking at where you want them to get to when you're going to be giving an offer or anything like that. And then, you know, setting up like a journey plan so that from the beginning of your content that you're sharing, you're working it through so that you are actually going to get to that end point that you want the people to be at so they can jump into um, to your next step. Okay. So with a good content plan, a good content plan always has multiple layers to it, right? We can't just say we're an authority on because what people will do is they'll go, oh, you're a little bit self-indulged not really going to listen to you you're a bit boring right you keep telling me how brilliant you are i'm off i'm going to go and find someone else what they want is they want variety and they want personality they want a reason to connect with you your brand your business you as an instructor maybe if it's just you in the business um, they want something to be able to hook into and what that means is a combination of types of content so authority content is brilliant yeah, it shows you know what you're talking about. People need that because they need to be able to trust what you tell them, right? Absolutely critical, 100% get that. We also need awareness content so people actually are aware you exist in the first place, right? Aware that actually you do have experience. That could be through storytelling. Um, you know, both of those could have a different spin on them, different angles via stories you can tell. Um, it could be experiential. It could be talking about case studies and things like that. Um, how you've helped people, what you've done, what things you go through. You know, it was very popular at one point where people would do a behind the scenes look at stuff. You know, what's my day like today? This is what I've done. I've dealt with three cats. One ripped my eye out. You know, the other one bit my finger and the third one was really lovely. You know, whatever it might be. And people will start to relate. And this is the last part of this is the relatability they'll start to go oh i've got that problem my cat tried to claw my eye out last week 
and they'll start striking conversation with you. Yeah, because remember, this is about dealing with human beings. This isn't about throw out content. We don't care who or what you are. This is about if we want you to come into a course, which is quite a personal thing, it's us putting ourselves out there, our own spin on whatever training that may be. You have to sort of like us initially, or you're never going to want to buy the course anyway. So we're giving them a pre-taste of what we're like. Now, people within New Zen have known me for two years. They know if they come into one of my challenges, they know, one, they're not going to get an easy time. Two, I'm a little bit sarcastic. So you've sort of got to put up with that. And my humour, although I find it quite funny, most people, other people don't, but it doesn't stop me doing it. So if you can handle all them three things, then you'll come into one of my boot camps, right? Providing the topic is what you're looking for. If some people will sit there and go, he's so annoying, I'll just not answer him. I like Liz because Liz is more my type of person. She's quite warm and fuzzy and, you know, I, I, I've got a better connection now. That's fine. She won't, but we might both do exactly the same training. So what we're doing is by the content we create, we're creating ourselves as unique, different, and we're getting people to choose, do you like us and our style? Or are we not for you and you need to go and find somebody else? Because if they do like us at this point, when they buy from us, your refund rate will be virtually non-existent. If they buy on the basis of just need of information, right, and they get in and they go, I oh, don't like the way you present that. You've got a verbal ticket, it's really annoying. And they're constantly looking for reasons not to like it. They're not focusing on the content. They want a refund. Right. So it's actually this stage is really important because this is where you start to find people that will go. You're brilliant. I like this. I'm really funny, really interactive with you. You know, they'll start joining in, but they'll also start talking positively about you outside of your own environment, which is where the leveraging other audiences starts to come in because they'll go and do it for you. You don't necessarily need to do it on your own. You can do it with your community. And this is how we start to build communities. So engagement, awareness, personality, authority, all of those types of content are really crucial to what we're going to be doing to create that audience of people that we're starting to warm up really nicely. But that's great, right? They come in, we might write half a dozen blog posts, really lovely content, can't leave a comment because on New Zen they, they can't comment at the moment. They come onto your Facebook page, they look at your cat memes, and every single day they're clicking like, they're clicking like, they're clicking like. Brilliant. But you still sold no courses. What's the next step? I'm not sure if this is the right answer, uh, but maybe the kind of audience we've been able to build, the kind of connections we've been able to build through the content that we have, uh, you know, the content plan that we executed. Now the connection that we've built, uh, maybe reaching out to them one-on-one -on -one and trying to understand that what the roadblock could be or what are they looking for. Uh, uh, maybe a personal connect to understand the audience better. Maybe that could be the next step. Okay. Liz, any ideas? Yeah, so I think I'd um, then move to some bigger connection with them, some kind of interaction. So like you mentioned before, you've got like the boot camps, something like that to actually have some, and as Mamit said, some one-to-one -one interaction with people or within a group setting, just to start building that relationship so you can actually have some real-time, you know, sort of conversation. Okay, let's go into the chat and see um, what anybody's saying here. So... Um... Sarah saying more cat memes as Krishna says consistency absolutely consistent that's a really good point a good content plan has multiple layers give your audience a reason to connect with you and your content uh, Sarah who as you may not have guessed by now or some of you may is actually my wife uh, and my business partner she's saying no one laughs at my jokes um, I don't believe that for a minute don't get me started on verbal ticks Jim Gardner good to see you, Jim maybe you could write some material uh, Jim stop it um jim you love my jokes you know it um sarah make an offer they can't refuse uh 
Right, Krishna, lead magnet free masterclass. Krishna, right, you're heading down the right path. What we're looking for, so we've gone off. Let's go right back to the beginning for those that are late into this. So we've gone off. We're looking for our audience. We've got no audience. We've created the course, nobody to buy. We've gone off. We've decided search and one social channel is where we're really going to be. So we're going off. We're starting to create our environments. We've researched. We know where our people are. Search is a given. Social media, we've picked our one channel. We've researched it. We've found other groups. We've found really busy pages. We know our cat people are on there. We've then gone off. We've created our areas. Facebook page, fully optimized. You go there, you know it's a cat place. Blog area, we know it's there. Great for search. We know it's a cat place. All optimized, really good. We've come up with our content plan. We're starting to post content. We've decided we're going to have a meme on a Monday. We're going to do this on a Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. Consistency. Really good. Getting some really good traction. The next step is we need a micro commitment from people. Okay. So this isn't a come and buy my stuff. They're not ready for that yet. All right. A micro commitment is taking them from a public area where they dip in, dip out, walk away. It's sort of doesn't really matter if they're there or not um, to taking them somewhere where they've actually got to go make a positive choice to be more involved with your business. So that could be um, a community in New Zealand um, or Facebook if you really want to. Um, but we're in a community in Facebook, so it does work. Um, so it could be a community in Facebook. It could be to join an email list. Yeah, it could be to come on a webinar with us. So a micro commitment that costs them nothing, but it's taking that relationship from you're just posting content out. They're going, oh, thumbs up. This is lovely. Have a little joke with you to actually, yeah, I want to go that next step further with you but without it costing me anything. It's not really a hard decision for them because some will do it because they just like you. Some will do it because they're actually genuinely curious or they've got an issue going on, but they're not really sure how or what you can do to help them. So we take that next step, which is, well, let's take a micro commitment, get them into a Facebook group. And the Facebook group might be for a specific thing related to your course or group of courses. Uh, we're not making a sale yet. We're just getting them involved deeper level it could be to join an email list where you say to them right i've got this opt-in page come here you know this is what i email about each week it might be special cat tips just for my email subscribers you know whatever it's not really relevant what it's about it's just the fact that they're moving that little bit deeper in with you or it could be going on to a webinar uh, that type of thing or even uh, a live class training that type of environment but away from the public and into a bit more private. Yeah, so a deeper, deeper level. So um, micro-commitment from a lead magnet. So, yeah, Krishna said lead magnet, a masterclass. Yes, lead magnet, really, really good. And, of course, we can create funnels and lead magnets within New Zenla. So everything I'm talking about here is doable within uh, New Zenla or Facebook. We do need to use external things slightly, but they're all free. So Sarah, so micro commitment, community email list or webinar costs nothing, but builds the next step. So absolutely right. Now, when they make that commitment in their brain, they're committing a little bit more to you and what you do without actually outwardly saying, Liz, I'm so committed to what you do. You're so wonderful. I'm going to follow you to the ends of the earth and buy everything you do. They may think that. They may not think that. We don't know at the moment because we don't really know them, right? If we go back a step and um, people were saying about, well, let's have one-to-ones with them and all of that, think about it from the point of view of you're selling a 20-quid course and that's our goal and you're spending half an hour having one-to-ones with people and you have a conversion ratio of one in 10, that would put your hourly rate to about 50 cents an hour. Right now, I don't know about you lot, but I don't really want to work for 50 cents an hour, especially with the energy prices in the UK and the fuel prices in the UK. Doesn't work for me. We're not at that point. If people want one on one time with you, then that's far further down the line and they pay an appropriate premium for that. Right. That's not something at this stage you should be offering anybody 
because you will just get loads of people that devalue your time, feel that you don't value your time, in which case that's not a good situation to be in. And it's certainly not going to make you profitable within your courses very quickly. So that bit, we need to park it, hold it, park it, don't dismiss it because one-on-one -on -one stuff is really good. But at this stage, it's not appropriate, right? And it will just it will just frustrate you again, right? And you'll feel you're constantly working, but for nothing. And that's not what we what we want. What we want is we want to enjoy this whole thing, right? So we've gone through micro commitment. So from the micro commitment, now to get the micro commitment, we've got we need to tell people to go and do something, don't we? So in our content plan, we need to add in. What's the micro commitment we're going to be putting through and mixing in with the content that we create? Now, if you go in every week and go, join my email list, join my webinar, join this, join that, join that, they're going to ignore all the other good stuff and they're just going to look at that and go, oh my God, this is so in your face, it's driving me mad. They're not going to want to do it. So you need to, within your content plan, focus strongly on one thing one really good way that you want to interact with your people so it's choice time again right remember we made the choice with the social media stuff don't do all of them pick one really strong one same point here is within the content mix pick one really strong micro commitment that you want people to make this will not capture everybody because for us or for me Getting them on an email list is absolutely paramount. Right? I want people on an email list because when you get them on there, conversion rates are massive. So I want them on an email list. A lot of people in the coaching world will want to get people into a private Facebook group because then they want to do live streams and stuff like that into the Facebook group. Right? Both ways are right. But at this stage, you need to really pick one. Because otherwise you become overwhelmed. You get three people join an email list, which you then forget about and ignore. And then you get five people in a Facebook group, which again, you're going, oh, it's only five people. I can't bother to live stream this week. I'll do it next week when I've got more. But you've diluted it so much on your page. You're only dripping people in at such a small rate. You're never going to get excited about it, which is why we just focus on the one. Focus on the one. And your action, the people taking that action will be higher. Therefore, it will grow quicker. You'll get more people engaged with it. And therefore, you'll feel more inclined to actually want to follow that through. Okay. So for me, it will be email. For a lot of people, it might be a Facebook group. Lots, there's also a lot of people that like doing live webinars every week. Um, you know, we do this with New Zealand. We do it with our onboarding stuff. So just pick your one at the moment. Right. And remember, we're starting right at the very beginning of this we're not talking about mature marketing systems we're talking about this is your first course building your first audience and all of that when you get to second course number two it changes right so and i'm not talking about that today this is for your first one so pick that and that's your micro commitment so within your content plan you'll work out how am I going to appropriately get people to come and sign up for my let's choose email list? Right. What am I going to do to do that? Any ideas? How do I get someone to sign up for an email list? Uh, by providing them one of the content pieces uh, from you know, maybe our service or product that we're offering, it could be an ebook, it could be a checklist or any kind of content piece that we give out to them uh, in which, you know, there's an exchange. We give out the value-driven content to them and they give us the email ID, so. Okay, yeah, I like that. Liz, any thoughts? Yeah, or again, going back to like, you know, a live webinar, something like that, a little masterclass, exchange that bit of live time with you for the email address okay so when we ask for somebody to sign up to an email list specifically um they want something in return all right they're giving us their email address they're not stupid they know we're going to email them and at some point make an offer all right we all know that this is not news but if they're going to go on to our list they want something and they want something that they can't get elsewhere and that's the key to it right 
they want something that they can't just go to your website and find or something that they can go into Google and find easily. All right. So this could be we will direct them to maybe a blog post, which is value driven blog post. If you've been on the five day blogging boot camp, you'll understand how this process works. So it might be a blog post, in which case that has an opt in link to an opt in form to go and get maybe a download of something, maybe a cheat sheet of something, uh, maybe a mini micro class of something, um, whatever it may be. That's a basic come into my email list and I'll give you a static document back. Now, within Newsender, of course, we have funnels. So we can actually enter them into a funnel. The premise is the same. We're getting your email address. What are you getting in return? Well, we could have a one, two, three step funnel that we take them down as in, right, I'm going to give you three videos. I'm going to give you three forms. I'm going to give you three cheat sheets, whatever it is. It does, at that point, it's irrelevant, right? The point is we need to take them from the social page that we've got to somewhere where they can sign up for something. Yeah. So again, you've got to make that choice. So choice number one is what's the micro commitment? Once we've decided on the micro commitment, for me, it would be, and the purposes of this, we're going to choose, we want their email address. We want them to sign up for some form of funnel, opt-in, lead magnet, whatever. The second thing is, well, what is that going to be? Is it going to be a webinar, uh, a video funnel? Is it going to be part of a first module of a free course, of a course? Is it going to be um, a PDF of something? We need to make that decision. That's going to be the next thing. And that's got to be highly marketable. Massive, massive high value. Do not give away lesson one of a course. And lesson one says, hi, I'm Frank. And I'm going to teach you how to look after your cat. And it's going to be really awesome. Can't wait to see you in lesson two. Thanks. Bye. Because they're going to walk away and go, what was that? What did I just sign up for for free? Just some idiot to say, oh, great to see you, but you've given me nothing. It doesn't work. It has to have absolute value. So if it personally, if it was me and I was giving away a part of a course, I'd give them the whole first module. Right? If it's a six module course, I'd give them the whole first bit of it. Because by the time they've gone through module one, which might have four or five lessons in, they're going to go, whoa, I can't wait to see what the rest of this is like. And now you know where this is heading, didn't you? All right. So they're going to go, wow, this is really great. Uh, I've met them on this amazing Facebook page. They've given me part of this course. You know, I'm really liking where they're sending me. This is brilliant. How do I buy the rest of this course? That's going to be their natural next question. Yeah. Once they've gone through it. Now, wouldn't it be lovely if life was that simple? It really isn't. So you need to think about, and this is the final part of this really, is how do we take them from, and in our case, an email list, let's say I've given them the first module of my course for free, how do I take them from there to say, you know what, I'm so awesome, my course is so brilliant, you're now going to pay me for the rest of it. Any ideas? I think by making an offer along uh, with a strong reason of why is it important for them. Okay. Liz, thoughts? And mm. um, I, I, I love the live stuff. So I would at that point then do like a live kind of something else, which would give away a bit more value. Yeah. And kind of highlight what the rest of the course would be able to give you. Um, and really, again, as Mammy said, like focusing in on their pain points and say, look, you know, this is what you've done. You've done this so far. Awesome. Amazing. Big congratulations with them and celebrating that they've taken those initial steps and then, you know, give a bit more, a bit more. 
Okay. I so, think uh, it also, like Liz mentioned, it also depends upon the price point uh, that we are offering at. Like Kevin was also talking about, if it is a lower price point, I think I would like to go with what I said, making an offer through the email or, you know, giving them a reason. And if it is a higher price point, it's a premium price price point, then going through the uh, process of a one-to-one -one or a live session and then making the offer. So I think for me, it would depend upon the price point. Okay. Both yeah. really good points. Um, both are right, but there's also alternatives. Yeah. So if I was to do that and say my course was 500 pounds, right? So it's not a small course. Right, they've come in, they've come onto social media, they've gone, oh, you know what, funny cat memes, like it. Oh, oh, he's got this thing, he's going to take me over to this blog post, talking a bit more about, oh, yeah, really like that. Oh, there's a link here, he's going to give me the first part of this course. Awesome, I'm going to go and sign up for that. So I've gone through Facebook, into the blog, signed up, micro-commitment. I've now in this place where I've got access to module one of this awesome course, so I'm clearly interested in it because otherwise I wouldn't have took the offer, right? So I've clearly got a cat. It's clearly a little bit mental and I need a bit of help with it. And this course deals with mental cats, right? But for me as a business owner, I don't even know that he's watched that course yet. So if I go straight in and go, come and buy my 500 quid course, wouldn't matter if it's a five pound course. I have no idea that they've even watched it. So what I would do is I would set up a little sequence of emails, maybe three or four, just probing in the first two or three. Yeah. Email number one. Oh, really great to see you. Really nice that you've took up our offer of getting this module for free. What was it encour that encouraged you to get this? See if they come back. Email number two. Hopefully by now you've had the course for the, the module one for three days. This part in module one was really, really fascinating. How did you feel about it? Right? If they ignore you, it means they've probably not watched that module. They might come back and go, you know what? That was such an amazing tip. I went off and, you know, I made sure that I sat there and stroked my cat's head as I was cutting its claws and defluffing it or whatever. Right, that worked wonders for me. I had my welder's gloves on so it couldn't scratch my hands to bits. It was brilliant. I know that they've watched it. Right? So I'm now quite legitimately able to say, This is really great. Glad you've got good value for module one. Would you be interested in, in looking at the rest of the course? Yeah. Personally, I'd send them a discount code and say, as you've already gone through module one, we really want you to get the most that you possibly can with your mental cat. You know, as you've subscribed, here's 10% off if you want to get the rest of the course. Yeah? So we've had, don't know us, onto Facebook, like our stuff, gone to our blog, come in our funnel, looked at our course, free course, opened some emails, so we've had seven interactions, possibly more, at a very basic level, seven interactions, probably a huge amount more, before we even start to say, come and buy this. Now, if they're not warmed up at that point, they're never going to be warmed up at that point. Yeah. They'll at any point during that discount themselves from you and your training and say, not, in, not for me, don't like it, don't need it, don't want it you know, can't afford it, um, you know, not right now because I'm selling the cat next week because it's such a nightmare, so I don't even need it, um, you know, whatever it might be, they'll either discount themselves or they'll massively include themselves. And, and if they're still with you at the point where you're sending those emails, now remember in New Zenda, apart from the Facebook stuff, the blogging, the funnel, the email, we can even filter the emails based on what they've done. Have they watched module one? Yes or no. If they've watched it, tag, send them this email. So we're not guessing whether they've seen it or not. We sort of know anyway, right? All of that we can do in the New Zenla system, right? And then we get to the point where we go, coupon code, would you like to buy? Right? 
if they've not bought it within a certain period of time or open that email, again, another filter within the Zenda, not open that email within three days, five days, we'll set a time limit on it, right? Final email, yeah? This is your last chance to get it. And then we know whether they're serious or not about it, right? That then closes that particular funnel for that course for that one person. Doesn't mean we're getting rid of them. Doesn't mean we're throwing them in the dustbin, right? Because the timing might be off for them. They might not have the finances. We might have caught them at the beginning of the month and they get paid at the end of the month. Um, there could be multiple, multiple reasons why they didn't go further and buy the course, not just I don't like the course. There could be hundreds of reasons. You know, there could be family issues going on, personal issues, whatever. So we don't dismiss them. What we then do is we take them out of that particular funnel and we put them somewhere else. Right. So we still carry on the whole nurture procedure with them, looking after them, looking after them, maybe redirecting them at that point via a general list back to a blog post we've written. Maybe somewhere we don't really want to take them off the platform. We want to keep them on the same platform. So maybe if we're creating blog content regularly for the search, take them back there, take them back there, and then just reintroduce them gently as we go along, just to keep them warm on the idea. And hopefully they'll make one of two choices. They'll either opt out of the emails and go, this ain't for me no more. Or at some point they'll re-engage and go, actually, yeah, I want to go and buy that now. And that's, or third one, I don't want that course, but I want course number two. Yeah. So the whole process behind this is not quick, right? This is not a, oh, I've launched my course today. Oh my God, I've got nobody. Um, let's go to Facebook and I'm going to get a thousand people. And even if you pay for Facebook ads, right, unless you know what you're doing, you'll just burn a load of money and you're never going to, or, or Google ads, you'll burn a load of money, you'll build the wrong audience and you'll just get, again, get very disappointed and very upset. So the premise behind this is when you've had the idea to join New Zenla and create a course, that's the point you start the beginning of this process. Not when your course is ready, but when you've decided, I want to make a course. That's when you start this process, because this will take weeks, if not months, to build a really engaged audience. You can build, you can start getting your, your social media and your search stuff done in advance, right? I'm not going to go through because one, I haven't got time and because I've rabbited on quite a lot today, but I haven't got time to show you. I was going to show you all the areas within New Zen for this, but I don't need to because we've got our tutorial site. Go to tutorial.newzenla.com. If you don't understand any of those things I've just talked about, as in what's a lead funnel, what's a blog, you know, any of that, how to do coupon codes, how to give a course, module one of a course away for free, how to use the email system, it's all in there tutorial.newzender.com go into the masterclass use the search function and find those specific parts learn it learn it well and understand it and then put it into place right that's not what this hour is about this hour is about giving you that process where you you've got some decisions to make right audience where are they i'm going to use the search engines because it's a natural buyers list People only ever go there because they want a solution. Pick one social media platform based on um, the research that you do and then commit to just one. Don't worry about, oh, my mate says Twitter's really good, right? It doesn't matter what your mate says. What matters is the time and effort you put into dominating and building your own area. That's what matters. So pick one, do it really well. Go through the process. What's your micro commitment going to be, right? What's the result that you're looking for on it, how are you going to nurture them through and then making an offer at appropriate time? If you've come into this late, go back about 45 minutes to an hour, right? And it will go through in some detail how you can do this and what that will look like for your business. And I guarantee you, if you follow this process, this isn't, of course, like all things, this isn't the only way to sell a course. It's a way of doing it and it works. If you follow this process, you will make sales. 
right? It's that simple. You won't feel wicky about it. You won't feel uncomfortable about it. You won't feel like you're selling something that people don't want. Your refund rate will be almost non-existent. Your opt-in rate will be much higher than it's probably ever been before. Um, and you will, at the very least, walk away with an engaged audience that really care about what you teach as much as you care about it, right? And if course number one is not for them, that's okay. Use the audience you've created to find out what course number two is for them because you've now got a ready-made audience of research people that have mental cats and you might have had course number one and they've gone, actually, it looks really good, but it's not for me. I'd rather have this. If 50 people go and you survey them and go, 50 people, yeah, fine. Pre-sale, bomb, sold, done. Next course already launched before you've even created it. Really, really simple. So plus cat swag on discount, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, Mami. I see you've put a little bit of a, a breakdown of what that is on there. Um, I'm going to shut up now because I think, I don't know exactly what the time is, but I think just, well, it's following off from Rakesh. He run over, so I've run over. Um, I don't know who's after me, but hopefully you've found that useful. Um, don't feel overwhelmed. For those of you that are watching this for the first time, don't feel overwhelmed with it. It is just a process. It's just like anything else that we do in the world, in business, at home, whatever. It's just a little process to go through. It can be as much or as little as you want it to be. Obviously, the more you can commit to creating regular content to engage and build that audience, the faster things will happen for you. But if you can only commit one or two uh, updates a week, that's perfectly fine. If you start only doing one a fortnight, it's pretty much not going to be worth your while. I'll be honest with you. Lots of people will say that's nonsense. I'm telling you as it is, if you do one update a fortnight, don't bother because it's not going to work for you. You need to regularly, and that's two or three times a week minimum, be engaging with your audience, updating them. You know, like we do here at New Zenla, you know, we have office hours every week. We have Zen Zone three times a week. We have Zen Chat twice a month. We have a day with Zenla once a month. We've got lots of stuff constantly, and we're doing this mainly through lives in our community here at New Zenla, engaging with you all, understanding you. We've built each of the Edco team have built relationships with people as New Zenla users over the time they've been here. Some of us like us more than others do. That's fine. Um, but that's the nature of how these things work. And the one thing we all have in common is we think New Zealand is brilliant. Um, we're here to help you all. Some of you want more help than others. Some of you are more engaged than others for whatever reason that is. But, it does, it, but we do put regular good content out. And that's the key. So what we're doing is what you need to be doing at a level that works for you because you'll probably be on your own, whereas we have a team here. Um, so work that out, work your plan and your strategy out. Think of it a bit like your war room. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to attack it. You have a strategy in place and all you've got to do is go and implement and then it'll work for you. That's it. That's me done. Hopefully you found that useful. Um, I'm going to hand back to Mamit now. Thank you so much, Kevin. I think it was extremely helpful. It was simple yet very, very effective strategies. That you know, you said that if people are going to implement it, they are definitely going to make sales. And with that, I would also you know remind them that this process would take time. This would work, but with time. So they'll have to show a little bit of patience to get those sales happening. But I really feel it was you know uh, like simple, small steps, but very, very effective. That if you follow the entire process. Process, it is definitely going to help all the coaches in the room. So definitely watch this part of day with Zandla. Go back, watch on the replay, and make sure you make the most out of it. Thank you so much, Kevin, Thanks for doing this. No worries. Thank you. Catch you later. Thank you. Yes. Oh, the, it's been a power packed morning since morning. All right. Uh, so today uh, I had thought of covering uh, how to you know, follow a progress on a coach's website. Because I really feel once we start on designing, once we decide that we're going to sell a course, once we decide that we are going to be a coach, 
the first thing that we do is setting up our social media, setting up, uh, you know, like Kevin was sharing, reaching out to your audience, setting up our social media, setting our website, setting the basics to reach out to the right people. And with the process of doing that, we do lose a lot of time is because when we are setting everything up, when we are setting our websites up, we feel that, you know, once it is ready, once it's complete, once it's ready for the launch, that is when I'll start reaching out to people. Whereas I feel that that shouldn't be the uh, first thing that comes to our mind, putting up an entire building, rather, we should start with the land that is starting small. Uh, on the same topic, I've kind of, you know, out of my experience that I feel that I faced through my journey, I've put in little details and information that might help you in your journey if you were starting as a coach for the first time. If you are someone who's decided that I want to be a coach and you're waiting for that perfect moment to build your entire website and then go forward with it. So let me share my screen. Just give me a second. All right. So here it is, phases of a coach's website. So before we begin, Liz, I would want to ask you that what was your journey when you started out as a coach? So did you wait for the time to complete your website and then launch it? Or how was your journey like? Yeah, awesome. So I began um, just by working with some people that I already knew. So I jumped okay. straight in as soon as I'd done any training and I started working with people um, initially on like a free basis just to get my experience so that I'd know what I was doing. Um, and so that was before I'd even started my website. Um, so I had a few reviews to then get going with. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that. So, you know, that's what I was talking about, that a lot of times when we are starting out, we are kind of, you know, are stuck in that loop that let the website complete, let the about us page complete, let the contact us page complete. Okay, let the testimonials come in. Okay, this part of the site needs to be changed. Let that graphic design come in. And a lot of other things that we keep uh, if I may use the right word, we keep procrastinating about like, let this complete and then I'll start. But let me tell you, there's no perfect moment that it has to be that, you know, done in the moment. There's no perfect moment at all. So according to me, there are particular phases in a website when you are a coach yourself. And for me personally, rather than uh, the phases for a website is not in the terms of design, rather it is in the terms of planning and implementation of that particular website. Now, when I say phases of a coach's website, it is not really design and aesthetics of the website. It is how do you plan and how do you implement the content and the uh, information that you want to give out to your audience. The first phase that I'd like to put it is setting the goal. So whenever you build your website, all of us have a certain goal. Of course, the byproduct or the you know ultimate goal uh, that we want to achieve is selling our courses or giving out the value we want to give to the people or helping the community, the helping the audience that we want to and helping the community out. Of course, that's the main goal. But apart from that, we have to set a goal for our website. What is the primary goal that we want our website to achieve? What is that one call to action we want to focus on? Because we have been repeatedly discussing when we put in a lot of call to actions that, you know, go uh, subscribe to my newsletter, go follow my YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel, join my Facebook group. And we put all those things together, the audience gets confused and they end up doing nothing. At the same time, when we give them one clear indication that, you know, this is where you have to go and sign up for, like Kevin was talking about a mini commitment and you have to choose. He gave two examples, the Facebook group and the email. So you have to choose which one do you want to go for when you're beginning initially as a coach. So similarly, you have to set a goal for your website that when you are building the initial phases of your website, what is the goal you want your audience or your people to achieve? Having said that, I might all, as well also say that what is the mini commitment or the small commitment that you want your audience to take? Having said that, I've already mentioned, do not try to build a house in the beginning. Begin with the land so that you build on it, you receive feedback, you receive reviews, and you slowly and slowly build your house. If you wait for that perfect moment, it will never come. 
It just has to be done in the spur of the moment. Do not wait for the perfect moment because there is none. Okay. When I say setting up the goal, there should be one goal for your site and everything else will be a byproduct. If you tell someone that, you know, hey, uh, this is a free ebook that I have that shows you how to get more signups for your site. If that is the one CTA you want your audience to focus on, moving to your social media, going to your YouTube channel, following you on Instagram, or maybe, you know, reading your blog post content, everything else will become a byproduct. Your main focus should be asking them to go sign up for that particular newsletter or the checklist that you're providing. Always give them one call to action when you're starting out initially so that your audience is not confused. I also say, I've also mentioned an example which says signing up for your course could be one of the call to actions that you want to focus on. And everything else in the website, every all the other links that are a part of your website will become a byproduct of it. So when you are starting out as a new coach, when you're starting out your first course, always remember, have a simple homepage or even if you know, even if you are, you have been in the coaching business and maybe you were looking to change your niche. Maybe you are changing your site, you're changing your dynamics and you are taking a shift. In that case as well, when you are doing the entire shift, do not wait for that perfect moment. When you're beginning initially, build a simple homepage with a one focus call to action that can make people connect with you and you can build that warm up audience Kevin was talking about. Always clearly show what your promise is. If you are promising them that, you know, for example, I make you more, I help you make, make more sales. So show them how do you promise them and how do you, how do people trust you that you are the person of authority who can make them achieve this particular goal that you're promising them. And of course, a lead magnet sign up. Uh, having, you know, said that, that create a simple homepage. Uh, I think a couple of weeks ago or days ago, uh, David did a Zen pop-up, which is right here, which is creating a temporary homepage. So in this video, what he's talking about, he's talking about that, you know, before you build up everything, before you build up your entire site and you put all the pieces together, you can put a, a temporary homepage where people can come in, sign up for your mini commitment and become a part of your list and and become a part of your audience slowly and gradually when you build on when you you know expand your site when you're building on the pages on the back end and once they are ready you can give it a launch so what i'll be doing is i'll drop this link in the chat box uh, below the video i'll drop it below the video you can always go back and watch this video because this will help you to create a temporary home page until and unless you're ready with your complete perfect home page Okay, let me just drop it here. You know, we did this with the challenge also when I was doing the three day lead to client challenge. Initially, we had set up the pre sign up form. Now, what was the reason of setting up the pre sign? Uh, pre sign up form and not the actual registration form is because we were building on everything on the back end, setting the live classes, the timings, the email automations, and everything that was required to make the ch challenge successful. Now we were doing all of that. We still wanted people to have an awareness that this is the challenge that that is going to happen. And these are the dates, these are the timings. So for that, we created a pre sign up form along with a tag, a tag story. And all the people who gave their information were tagged into that particular tag set inside the news envelope. Once we you know, launched the challenge, once we put up the registration form there, we had all the people directly linked into that particular course. So similarly, you can also have a temporary homepage wherein you set up a lead magnet for your audience, like a pre sign up form along with a tag and start connecting with them and start creating a connection with the entire audience that is coming in. And once you are ready to launch your site, once you are ready to launch all the pages that have been set in 
the inside the site you can directly put them into the particular challenge funnel course or whatever you're planning them uh, planning for them as a freebie or as uh, the first course of content that you want to put out of course this would be a free content and this would not uh, be a paid content okay so let's go forward now I have a few examples here, which are simple home pages with one kind of a CTA. These uh, screenshots or these sites have been put up, have been seen, you know, various people that are a part of my community or maybe a part of my Facebook list. And I did get a glance at it. So I thought it will be a good example and I wanted to share it with you. So if you see this screenshot, uh, there is a button below uh, this first like the first screen that we see, they have like a message that they want to give out to people that this is what they're doing. And in the second section, they share a little bit information of how they do it. So the first is the message that they want to give out to the people. In the second one, they are showing how they do it. And the third is a button, which is a call to action for them. And that is, I think, the end of the page. And more or less, I think they have testimonials below this. So this is an example of a simple homepage with one call to action when you're starting out, uh, you know, as a new coach or initially when you're starting out when everything else is building on the background, your website, your curriculum, everything else is building on the background. This is how you can set up a simple homepage because today uh, a lot of people do want to visit your website and see that who you are and what you do. You have set up your social media pages, you have the initial uh, setup done, but if you don't have a website, if your website has maybe, you know, that insecure sign or if it is coming soon, people do want to see that what you're doing. A website is a credible and a source of visibility in the online world. So you might as well put up a temporary homepage with some basic details for people to see that who you are and what you do. With uh, without you know focusing on that you know I need to put up the entire website the entire content only then I can launch and only then I can reach out to people and tell them that what I'm doing there's one more example that I have now this person has a very uh, clean you know simple home page and a lot of white used which I really like now they have again a marketing message and a picture to support it and then they have their call to action whatever they are offering to their audience as a free element as a lead magnet and below this I think uh, more or less they have again a testimonial section to support what they are promising so this is again an example of a simple home page to reach out to people and make them a part of their warm audience and make them a part of your community and your audience. This is the first page. This is the first phase, which is setting up your goal and setting up that one call to action for your website before you are ready for the final launch. Now, after this, you might have two options. You could just keep a simple home page like the other pages and keep attracting leads through there and make sales via one-to-one -one meetings. Again, remember your sales depends upon the price point that you're offering and on the journey that Kevin just shared uh, below uh, before this session. So it completely depends upon what you're offering, how much time you're giving, and is it a live, is it a recorded session, and what your price point is. So in this one, this person is following a free training, and after the free training, they're inviting them on a one-on-one -on -one call and then making their sales pitch. Similarly, it is up to you if you want to have a simple homepage with one CTA and attracting leads to make sales via one-on-one. -on -one. Or maybe the second thing is you keep working on your site in the background and make it live once it is ready to make sales directly on the site through the emails or through you know, creating that sequence and reaching out to the people. Okay, so I think the little surprise that I had planned, uh, I'll share it towards the end. Now the phase two is developing curriculum. Now once our goal is set for the site, we know that what we want to achieve from that simple homepage that we've set up before the entire launch is ready. The second is developing our curriculum on the background. Now, uh, I would suggest that is uh, that happened with me. So this is a personal journey. I keep repeatedly sharing that that what I did was once I decided that I wanted to be a coach and back then I decided that I want to teach how to create websites which I'm no, long, no longer doing 
But what I did was that I went out, I did the entire research, I understood my consumer, I understood my audience. And before doing, like Liz was just sharing, that she did the first initial free one-to-ones to understand if um, her audience is able to consume what she's delivering and, and to also get in a few testimonials. I did not go through that phase. I simply went ahead, did the entire research, put in my knowledge, put in my experience of practically done for you services. And then I created it into a course to help people to create websites and use it as a skill to you know, work as a freelancer. But what I did not realize is because I did not conduct free classes, uh, I'm sorry, because I did not conduct live classes, I was at a point wherein I was not very clear if this is what the user wants, if this is what is the need of the hour, and if this is what is the kind of delivery they're looking forward to. So I kind of missed at that point. And now I realized that always before moving to the recording part of the courses, one should always test their curriculum live with a few handful of students that you come, that you get from your warm audience. The warm audience that you've just created, you could reach out to people and that is completely up to you if you would want to give a free trial or maybe you would want to give it a low cost or however you would want to do it. But uh, that has been my journey that I did not test the curriculum live. And now I would suggest that everyone who's starting off with, as a coach initially should definitely test their curriculum live. So I would suggest conduct live classes until the curriculum is ready, because like I did spending all the time in recording without testing it, if the market actually needs it, I did not really get a lot of sales. And the sales that I got, people did not actually go in and watch the courses beyond one or two videos. And that was kind of disheartening. But if you are someone who has a already tested the waters by coaching one-on-one, -on -one, or maybe you have been coaching people offline before the pandemic, then you could divide your time between recording the material that you already have and deciding, you know, designing the site page by page so that your site is ready to be launched on the back end while in the front end, you are moving to reach towards your audience and creating that community of yours. Now, uh, depending upon what your site is, what your niche is, what you're offering, what your product or service is, there are a few pages that I recommend should definitely be there in your site, but it's completely up to you that what do you feel are the pages that should definitely be there. I would suggest a testimonial page is very, very important. And when you're talking about the testimonial page, remember there should be more and more videos than written text because the world is moving towards a place wherein the attention uh, attention span of a person is very, very less. In that case, uh, videos are working the best. The second number is images. Text does work, uh, you know, in numbers, text does work a lot. But when it comes to the testimonials, I feel that the audience does not really want to sit and read all the testimonials. If they have somebody, uh, you know, a recorded person speaking on the testimonial, it gets better because they feel that, you know, a human is speaking to them. It's a real person who has achieved the results from your service and they kind of build that trust. So I would suggest when you do the testimonial page, try to depend or try to do more of videos with your users or with the people who have bought your course and got results. The second is a contact us page, which is very important. Remember, you have your social media links on the contact us page. So whoever wants to write down an email to you can directly do it through the contact us page or they are routed towards your social media pages through that page. The third one is the privacy policies and the terms and conditions that you make your students and prospects sign up for. But uh, this is only very, very crucial when you're running ads so that any kind of, uh, if there is, uh, if Facebook has to point out something or they might not restrict, restrict your ads or your website, in that case, have a privacy policy page. But if you know, you're just starting out, you're not running ads, you just want to simply put up a website, you can let the privacy policy page go. And later on, when you expand your site, you can definitely put the privacy policy page. Okay, the third phase that I would like to talk about. Now, the first phase is setting up your website and doing a mini simple homepage before you actually launch the entire thing. 
the second phase would be building on your audience and reaching out to them all right and the third one would be building visibility because before you are reaching out to your people and a whole uh, important part of this conversation was discussed by david in the last session that you know you should not actually do it once your poster is ready once your curriculum is ready you should do this once you've decided that you want to be a coach you start building your visibility you start putting your word out there once you decide that you want to be a coach so the third phase as a part of your website should also be building up visibility now decide on a marketing strategy and start implementing that one strategy by the time you're designing your website or testing your curriculum live like kevin was also saying i think a lot of uh, you know my reference goes back to kevin's session because he was also talking about the same thing that when you're starting out what are the certain things that you have to focus on so decide on that one marketing strategy do not try to focus on different strategies and different channels start with one and see the results that you can try from there now why is this important is because once you you know move out to your audience once you uh, decide on that one strategy and you start reaching out to people the testimonial of you will also build up on the testimonials because you'll start reaching out to people so the testimonial page of your site will have the most attractive content if you keep reaching out to people if you keep creating content for them if you keep selling your courses live in testing your curriculum live in getting testimonials because the most viewed page of a website would be a home page talking about the process or who you are what you do and the second most visited page i think is a testimonial page which should have the most attractive content and the best results your audience has been able to drive because of your services and keep building your visibility until the time you launch and a very detailed process of you know building your visibility has been shared by kevin already where he shares about the lead magnet the group the one strategy that you focus on and once you are ready while you are doing all of this while you've put up a mini home page you're building your website on the back end you are also testing your curriculum live you're also taking your testimonials and you're building your website in the background your home uh, your contact us page your about us page your testimonials page privacy policies page all of this is going in the background now once you are ready for the launch once your site is ready just launch now you may ask me that you know how much time will each phase take or how much time it should take me to build my entire site let me tell you there is no particular time because every coach has a different journey every coach has a different time so no matter how much phase how much time does one phase take take your own time and build with it because your mini temporary home page is already ready you just have to keep working on your site on the back end and having said that i would really like to say that do not stop and you know think of that perfect moment if you think about it then just do it let me just take a look at the chat and then i'll sh show the little surprise element that i was talking about okay thank you so much anna thank you andrew Thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much. Okay, let me just update it and see if there are any more comments. Okay. So the little surprise that I also shared in the group yesterday was that uh, i would be willing to share a feedback on a few sites or feedback i would say those will be my suggestions please consider them my personal opinions your journey your coaching program uh, is very very personal to you and you know your journey best so whatever i share will be my personal suggestions so please uh, feel free to either accept them or let go of them let me just share my screens i did receive the links of two websites yesterday let me just see if you've received any more links
Okay, so I think we have two links. Let me share my screen. Okay, so the first site we have is Black Mama's Birth Village. I think this was by Lorna. The one thing that I love about the site is the color combination because the logo has an orangish color and a red color. And the same kind of colors have been used on the entire page. So I really love the color combination that has been uh, used in the entire site, making sure that your logo complements the entire homepage. So always remember, whatever the colors of your logo uh, should primarily be used across your site so that it creates uh, a connection for the user when they go through the site. Okay. Okay. Okay, I love the way you've shared uh, like a journey for the person that what is what is that you're offering. And here you're telling them that, you know, uh, why is this membership for them and how do, how, I mean, how does it um, work for them and how is it relatable for them? Okay, and then you also share your journey that why did you want to create such a community? Okay, for so this part, I would recommend that since the logos are of different size, uh, maybe you could also do is like what is happening is the black ballot uh, logo is a little bigger. So the entire spacing is increasing. For me, I think it would really look nice if all the three logos are of the same size. I do understand this one uh, is horizontal in nature and this one is a little square. But if somehow we can achieve a similar size for all the three logos, I think um, like the consistency would look really good here. Okay. Okay, I also really like the way you've put the, um, the entire process uh, you know, in a way of separating it with these lines. Okay, here I would suggest you could use a different color because uh, both the colors are a little light color. So if you, you uh, depending upon what colors have you used, See here, you're using a little dark, dark brown color, so the white is looking really nice. But here we are using a little light shade of that peach or brownish color. So that's why white with this color, both are looking a little subtle in nature. So a little darker color on the background or a little darker color on the text would make it look even better. I would really also suggest that if we could have a testimonial section, a little, um, oh, I mean, before the process, um, I feel if the testimonial section could be before the process or before let me introduce so that people, you know, who, the audience or the prospect that's reading your site, because generally not all people and not everybody read, you know, goes till the end of the website. They generally scroll through the first half. So maybe if we have the testimonial section, the first half would look really good because uh, it would motivate people to go till the end and read till the end. Okay. Okay. Is it clickable? Yes, okay, it's clickable. Uh, for this part, I would suggest to you that if you could use uh, images that are of similar nature, like if you see here, this is a type of a book, like a book cover, and here then we are using a square image, and then the image that we are using here is also slightly bigger. So if all these three sections, that is this one, two, and three, if these three sections look similar in nature in terms of their headlines, their picture and their subheadlines, I think it would look really nice if there is similarity between these three sections. Okay. 
I think apart from that, it, uh, the site looks really nice. Just bits and pieces here and there would make it even more better. But right now it's beautiful. Also, I would want to ask that in your entire homepage, I could only see a paid version of your community and to reach out to you through a paid uh, membership. Is there also a lead magnet that you're using or is there a free community or a free resource that people can get in touch with you? Uh, or is it just the paid memberships that you gave, or do you have a checklist, a free ebook, or anything of free resource material wherein people can get in touch with this community or this um, service? Okay, let me just check. Okay, Krishna says, I love the site, amazing design and branding. Okay, Hannah says, keeping it simple and clear definitely now is an affirmation and mantra. Okay, Lorena says, there is a free Facebook group, but I do not see it on the entire homepage. So somewhere if we could highlight that there's a free Facebook page, as a free Facebook group as well, or is it me who has missed it? Just let me know. Maybe we could highlight in a way that, you know, it's okay if you're not ready yet, if you are not ready to invest that time and money uh, into the community yet, uh, we still would want you to become a part of it and learn as much as you can. So maybe highlighting that Facebook group would give you a little more open room for getting that warm audience uh, towards your community. Just taking a look at the chat. All right. Okay. Uh, having said that, the entire page, the entire branding is beautiful. Uh, I really like the way it has been set up piece by piece, all the colors and the uh, use of white is absolutely amazing in this page. Just few pieces, which are again, my personal suggestions, it's completely up to you to accept it or let it go. Okay, so let's get at the second page that has been shared. Now this was shared by, I think Krishna, I'll just, let me just take a look at the name. Yeah, it was shared by Krishna, okay. So here, Krishna, the first thing that I noticed was there was no fev icon. When we say fev icon, it's actually a place uh, where, you, uh, you know, if I open Google right now, here is where I see the uh, small G sign that is the sign of Google. So here in your Zenla site as well, you will have an option wherein you can put the fev icon, which represents the uh, browser bar as your website. So here I would suggest you to put a fev icon. And then I also notice when I click here, it leads to a no found page. So make sure that whatever section you're using here, I think you're using an image element. So whatever section you're using here, make sure to put a link to it so that people are able to route to the exact place because this is the first section of the site and it is not routing to the right place. So that could be losing potential audience. Uh, also, I feel that, you know, once we come down from the first section itself, we have a place here that talks about want 10% off on your first order. I would really suggest if you could tell people that, you know, here we're just talking about many bits of how this would help you out. If you're in if here in this section, we could talk about how does this benefit them? Or maybe this copy of yours, which is brilliantly written when you say, you know, let me guess, you started with your kitchen and you share everything in detail. After this, if you talk about the coupon code, then it would make sense because up till here, this point, I am not very clear if I want this and if this is for me. So once your user or your prospect is clear that this is what they want and this is for them, then they would like to see that, you know, discount or coupon code. But I think the placement of this should be moved a little down. Okay. And uh, this I'm assuming is a free group. If this is a free group, I would really want you to write in the bar, I am ready to join the free skincare makers club so that it is very evident for the people that you're offering this as a free resource. Let me check the comment section if you've written anything.
Okay. Uh, like I said, if if this is a free resource you're offering, remember to put the free in the uh, button bar. Okay. I really like the leaves that you've used. This is very. Uh, uh, what do I say? This is very close to what you're offering and makes the person kind of connect with your brand again, because simply when we use sticks and circles, that's the normal thing. So these leaves look really nice. Okay. So I think here, when you say get started today with one of our courses, maybe you could put up the discount bar just above this or maybe below when you're talking about your courses. Okay, and this get your download uh, downloadable cheat sheet of essential oils. This I would want primarily to be little towards the top, like I was talking in the last uh, section about Lorena's site, that people is initially want to see the first half of the site. So when they're scrolling through the first half, if they see this section, this is a really nice section put up, really nice. The color combination is nice. So if you put put this up a little up towards the up, then you will get more signups and a little more warmer audience coming into your community. Um, probably when you say, let me guess, and after your copy, you could put the section here, all our, you know, above all our courses, and after the entire copy, you could put up your um, cheat sheet section. Also, I would recommend you should create a little more gap between uh, the sections, like, like here is a perfect gap between these two sections. Similarly, if you could have these white spacings like here, the gap is a little less. If you could increase it a little more, it'll look really nice. The white spacing could be increased. Okay. I really like this image. This has been set up really nice. Okay, and this makes perfect sense because if somebody is coming towards the end of your site, this definitely means they're interested in your product and they have made the decision to buy it. They're just looking at the opportunity of, you know, maybe a discount, a coupon, or maybe how to reach out to you to make this particular sale. So this makes perfect sense here. Again, I think this site has been done really nicely. The color combinations are really nice. All I would want you to do is that uh, make a little changes here and there so the site becomes uh, more and more, you know, convertible. You are able to make more conversions. Okay, she says, if I create spaces and blocks and mobile looks too much gap. Okay, Krishna, I, uh, uh, if you see in Zenla, there are two places to make the edits. It's the mobile version and the desktop version. So what you can do is inside the desktop version, you can make the spaces a little larger and you can hide them on the mobile. Uh, if you go to the settings and if you go to the last part, which is hide on. So whatever changes you make on the desktop, you can hide them on the mobile. And that way your mobile will not have that kind of a spacing which your desktop version has. Okay, it's not free, it takes them to the course page. Okay, then that's absolutely fine. Then I would recommend you to move your cheat sheet towards a little up so that if they are yet not ready to, you know, buy your offer, buy your sale, they at least become a part of your warmer audience. All right, I hope that makes sense. All right, so we are very close to ending the first half of day with Zenla. And I think it has been a powerful morning with all the education, all the members of the education team coming in and sharing all their insights with the features shared by Rakesh. They're coming in and how to make sales by Kevin. I think we are very close to ending the first half of the, half of the day. So. How is it for you, Liz? Yeah, it's been amazing. And, you know, all the team that has come in and shared and, you know, awesome that session. Thank you, Mami, for sharing and for doing the feedback on the sites as well. I think that's beautiful. It's the live feedback. And I know that that is really supportive 
you know, for those couple of New Zealand users that have been commenting, um, so for Christian and Lorna, so I think that was awesome. And yeah, what David shared, uh, no, not David, what Kevin <laughs> shared <laughs> earlier was amazing in his session, getting us, you know, to be able to sell our first course. And then also those updates from Rakesh. So the recent announcements and then the stuff that's coming up in the pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> super, super, super Zealand today. <laughs> yeah, right. And I think when you mentioned David, that's what I want to say. That's that's how much we are missing him because he's the only one who couldn't be there for today because he's on and off. So we would have really loved him to be here. And that's why, you know, we keep reminding his name. Exactly. He's still here in spirit. So you showed him yeah. with that little Zen pop up and that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And obviously David Zendler has been his baby. So it's yeah. really nice for us to, to support today. Exactly. What are you planning for the uh, second half of the day with Zendler? Like what's your plan or what you would be talking about? It's still a surprise. So I'm going to keep oh. it super, super secret. You know, we spoke about that earlier today and I'm going to keep it a surprise until the session. So you'll have to, well, you'll be there in support. But yeah, everybody else can tune back in again at three um, for, yeah, a super surprise session. Absolutely. So let me just take a look at the comment section and see if there are any questions, if you have anything Always, Lorena. Thank you, Krishna. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Anything related to the Zendler site, your course creation journey, or anything that you're interested for as a coach. Okay, Krishna says, see you at three. We still have a couple of minutes to go. So uh, Liz, I have always been sharing my story of you know how I started, what I did, and what are the mistakes I did. We would really love to know that how did you start as a coach? What was the moment when you felt that, you know, okay, I'm, I want to get into coaching now, and this is the subject that I'll be choosing. So what was uh, the aha moment like? Yeah, so for me, it came at a really like dark moment um, in my life. So I'd just gone through some really long family court issues. Um, two of my daughters, I'd given them the choice, you know, all of them where to live. Two of them had just gone to live with their dad. And so I was sat in the car, in the traffic on the M4, and this song comes on, Here Comes the Sun. And I love that song so much. And for me, like my girls, you know, were my son, you know, they're the ones that kept me moving through everything. So they were my inspiration and my big why, you know, we covered that within like your story sessions. So that was really difficult um, point for me. And I knew that I wanted to do something different. So I started to work on myself because I knew I had a lot of, you know, personal leadership stuff that I wanted to work through a lot of healing and you know just building myself and my self-confidence up so I started looking at how I could do that for me and then within that process part of my healing process was to rehabilitate our first Romanian street dog so we brought her into our fold and through working with her I connected back in with like my animal reiki so that's my other side um, as well and through really supporting her with that I built her sort of her voice her bark I built up my voice again and both of our self-confidence and just as we were building that connection and being more confident, you just become freer. And so everything is calmer, it's more happy. And I knew that I wanted to share that with other people. So I actually began, I was going to do dog behavior and, you know, like work that in with people because I'd gone through such an amazing journey with her. And I still do support a little bit with that. Um, and also, like I said, with like the animal Reiki, but then I really, really got deep into the people because of the experience I'd gone through. And I was like, there, there has to be easier ways, you know, like one of the new Zen, the things is easy, effortless, efficient. And I love those. Those are three of my top words, too. And I was like, right, do you know what? Coaching and healing and moving through your own processes, doing your own, um, you know, setting up your own new Zen, the site, as you've been sharing today. It gets to be easy, it gets to be simple, and it gets to be fast because 
the resources are there. And when it's personal coaching, you hold all of your resources in you, you know, all of your answers. So it's you connecting to my own things. And I then was like, do you know what? I get to share this and support other people so their journeys get to be quicker. And here we are. <laughs> that is such a beautiful story. <laughs> And, you know, often I often share in my sessions that I've been doing with Zanda that I read this quote somewhere and I think it has stuck with me that uh, your mess becomes your message. So you're only able to reach out to people. You're only able to help them out when you have actually gone through the process yourself. You have to be a practitioner before you actually become, you know, a preacher. So. If you've not done it, how do you practically tell people? How do you actually share the pain points that, you know, this is what the journey was like. This is what I was going through. And uh, this is where I connect to you. Or I think uh, beyond that, as a coach, I feel we'll not be able to come up with solutions when we don't know the pain. When we don't know the process, how would we actually come up with a, you know, a solution, a practical solution. Because uh, like a practitioner, like if we talk about the dentist, if they don't know actually how to fix a tooth, how will they fix a tooth or how will they tell you that, you know, this is what you should do to fix a teeth. Mm -hmm. So similarly as a coach, if you've only done theory and if you've not implemented it, if, if you've not gone through the process, it is practically impossible for a person they would be able to do it for a shorter while, I think, reaching out to people and uh, showing them what is to be done. But the audience will sense it. They will sense it that this is just words and this is not a practical implementation and the person has not actually gone through it. So, uh, you know, the kind of, uh, <laughs> the kind of uh, generation that we're coming up, like the fast paced world that we're moving to is that, you know, a lot more coaches are coming up, but at the same time, we actually need to make sure that uh, who are the people who actually come forward and do the promise of, you know, yes, I've been there and I can take you through this. That they are uh, well, concerned about what they're offering and what their solution is. And that can only be done when the person has felt the pain, I think. If you've not felt the pain, I think you would not be able to connect to that solution and you would not be able to serve your audience is what I feel. Yeah, I love it. And you know, you touched on authenticity and I think that's such a huge thing, just being able to show up as yourself. And when you're coaching, like walk the walk, talk the talk. So if you're sharing things, you know, such as um, I reframe things a lot of the time. So rather than saying, you know, I have to do this, it would be, I get to do this or I choose to do this. And it's giving yourself back the choice. So as coaches, we get to, you know, to do those things too, because it makes our life nicer, more friendly, makes the people around us happier, you know, and calmer. <laughs> But also it means you're really, you're doing it. You're doing what you say. You know, it's um, like that age old thing from school where the teacher goes, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And it's the opposite. <laughs> if you're coaching, you've got to do it too. Otherwise people are going to smell that. They're going to sense it. And, you know, you're not going to get those um, relationships and, you know, and customer connections and things. Definitely. I think then it is going to be a short term blow. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think today uh, the morning has been lovely and uh, we've had tons and tons of powerful value added uh, information coming through the super fabulous education team, which we are extremely proud of. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you everyone for watching if you've not been able to watch it live please catch it on replay and make sure to watch it bit by bit so that you consume all the information that makes you achieve more and more with your sites and now we'll catch you at 3 p.m bst for the second half of a day with zanla see you at 3 p.m bye, -bye. see you later